just to your west and about to move into a downtown Jasper. So uh, places in the path of this would be Cherokee Road. Uh, you can also see here uh, Glen Oaks. All of those locations under a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So that warning does not only include parts of Winston County, but it also includes parts of, uh, of Walker County too. So we want to make sure that those folks know that they are indeed under a a severe thunderstorm warning. So from just now to the east of Arley, so a good chunk of the Smith Lake community under a severe thunderstorm warning. And then again, down toward Jasper as well, that's where we're seeing a uh, severe thunderstorm warning in effect. And so we could be seeing winds in excess of 60 miles per hour here, perhaps even some very large hail that cur certainly could cause some structural damage, especially to, uh, to vehicles. So places that are in the path of this, now you can see from Viking Drive up toward Cliff Road, Arkadelphia Road, Blackwell Dairy Road, all of those areas are just downstream from this severe thunderstorm and you are within the warned area. Again, this is a severe thunderstorm warning, but we still t tell folks you need to seek shelter. You need to get in an interior room on the lowest floor that you possibly can. Skyline Drive, the storm is basically on top of you. So for Jasper, um, if the uh, if you uh, don't hear the heavy rain and the wind howling just yet, it's going to be on top of you very shortly. I've put on the lightning data with this, and it looks like for the most part, most of the uh, the lightning has actually been up in the parts of Winston County. So uh, there hasn't been a lot of thunder and lightning data, but I bet the wind is howling now here for parts of of uh, Jasper. So folks need to be aware of that severe thunderstorm warning. And really right now, that's the only warning that we're dealing with, at least in our areas, the severe thunderstorm warning for Winston, Coleman, and also for uh, Walker counties for kind of this segment of the line that could in indeed be producing winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. We kind of take a wide view again. And Jerry, the threats ended for the western counties. A lot of those counties uh, have been removed from the tornado watch. Uh, and it looks like we do still, if you just kind of look at the entire view, your eye goes to where most of the, the thunder and lightning data is, is collected there down with that severe storm in Perry County. It really has weakened considerably. There's a little bit more there up into uh, up near Smith Lake where we do have the severe thunderstorm warning. Um, the uh, We did get some reports in from our producers that they talked to the uh, Vance PD, uh, police department chief, and he said that at this point he had not heard of any storm reports. Uh, they uh, they were not getting any of those in, and that's from the, uh, the Vance police chief. So uh, that's certainly some good news there. We are getting other scattered reports from uh, Hagler to Coling with that confirmed tornado touchdown that there has been some structural damage and, of course, some trees and likely some power lines down there. So most of what we've seen so far, with the exception of that confirmed tornado, has been very, very sporadic tree and power line damage. Jerry? All right, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, we're, we're, a lot of folks are trying to get more information from this storm, the tornado that touched down in Aberdeen, Mississippi, and some of the media is losing patience with this, but those people are very busy right now. They have major problems. I see somebody from a national, from CNN actually, was asking about any more information on the SPC report of two fatalities near Aberdeen. There are conflicting reports of people missing and stuck in homes. Here's the thing, right now we're not priority one. We're not. The priority one is helping the people there who need help. And so the reports that the media gets will have to come in slowly and that's the way it is. It's a major storm. There are other priorities like helping people who are hurt and, and just helping people get back on their feet in, in the short hours after the storm. Reviewing this again, we have this uh, tornado warning down here in Perry County. So far, no signs that they're going to extend this at all. It's uh, becoming kind of difficult to see the actual couplet with it, so we'll see. Storm still causing a lot of rain, still a very active storm. Marion, as you can see, Heiberger are all getting torrential downpours and getting bombarded with lightning. Cloud to the ground lightning, noisy thunder. I doubt anybody's sleeping in Marion tonight. And then off to the north we go, the rain now overspreading the Birmingham Metro, but thankfully, at least for now anyway, seems to be less organized in terms of any kind of structure. But now we have a new tornado warning issued for northern Coleman County until 3.45 a.m. for this storm coming out here. Now let's switch to the Huntsville information here. See if we can find out the latest on that. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located near Nesmith or nine miles northeast of Arley, 
moving northeast to 50 miles per hour. That's very close to Smith Lake right now in that part of Coleman County. So a new tornado warning Coleman and Morgan County till 3.45 a.m. from a storm now currently located uh, nine miles northeast of Arley, moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. This is the way the storm looks on the, on the velocity winds right now. There's Crane Hill. Uh, here's the tornado warning here. And at this point, it looks like it's kind of surging in from the southwest, too. Maybe some strong winds here that could be uh, either straight line winds or perhaps a tornado. Here's Jones Chapel located here, Crane Hill. And there's some of this intense rain and the lightning, too, following it. So a new tornado warning issued with this storm now that's moving through this part of Coleman County and moving northeastward pretty quickly. You're, you're under the warning if you're from Coleman or just about Good Hope on northward all through this area from a storm back here in Winston County near Arley moving northeast at 52 miles per hour. That forward motion plus the location of the storm would place it near Crane Hill at 319, City of Coleman at 334, Vimont 335, Simcoe 342, uh, and then Eva 345 a.m. So that's a fast moving storm like all of them have been. And this is a uh, now a tornado warning for that part of Coleman County. As you can see, it includes West Point. It includes Fair, Fairview. It does not include Hansville. It just about includes a, a Good Hope right on the south edge of the warning cone. And it certainly includes a big chunk of US 278 here as this storm moves from southwest to northeast. So again, tornado warning in effect for Coleman County from this storm. And pretty impressive looking in through here. If nothing else, there are pretty strong winds with this, it looks like. Uh, located pretty close to Crane Hill, and we're now getting some of that thunder here as the um, storms get closer to us, generally speaking. You're looking out over the city of Birmingham. You're looking out from this shot here atop Red Mountain. We're seeing uh, uh, some rain falling now. The wind is blowing, but it's not that powerful by any means. Trees are moving around a bit, just a bit. The rain is coming down. The visibility is down somewhat because of the um, rain obscuring some of the visibility from the city lights. Um, and the thunder and lightning is beginning to occur, too, as the storm moves in from the southwest. Fortunately and thankfully, doesn't look as strong or organized right now as it was earlier when it went through southeastern Tuscaloosa County not that long ago. All right, so here's some of that rain with that northern storm now with the tornado warning. The tornado warning in Perry County has apparently expired or been canceled because it's not showing up on the map anymore, and that has they canceled it. 3.11 a.m., that was three minutes ago, that warning was canceled for Perry County. So the one active warning here, tornado warning that is, is for the northwestern part of Coleman County, including Crane Hill, Jones Chapel, City of Coleman, West Point 2, uh, and Good Hope, I guess, is just south, actually, of the warning. Um, the Walker-Winston one is a severe thunderstorm warning moving northeast at 52 miles per hour, but just based on... That storm, which is what uh, Huntsville is, is issuing the tornado warning for for Coleman County, near uh, Crane Hill at 321, about six minutes from now, West Point 333, maybe a little bit south of West Point, Vimont about 337, Simcoe 344, uh, as it continues on moving northeastward at 52 miles per hour, so wasting no time whatsoever. There's a big broad view of this whole thing. There's the rain and the thunderstorm spread, overspreading uh, Jefferson County, Shelby County, and surrounding areas. Some of the heavier downpours back here to the west around Johns, and that's uh, around Rock Creek, too, getting some of that heavy rain. Here's the area around Bessemer, as you can see. 16th Street North in Bessemer is really wet, as well as surrounding areas like 6th Avenue North, 10th Street North, uh, also Alabama General 150. Fashion. Just here's US 278, very, very heavily. And there's, um, and that's all coming up from the southwest Interstate here. Interstate 65, Here's some obviously, of the winds here. With this, and, and the storm is nice approaching now from the southwest. Through, Let's uh, take a look and at what we got here. The, uh, um, a couple uh, things. The uh, uh, storm in uh, Perry, in big County inflow notch, starting to Here's swing around. Heavy rain so I don't know if we'll see that warning come back or not. We could, I guess. Nothing new coming from the Coleman County storm. They were monitoring the storm near Smith Lake. And it was about five minutes late. Coleman County. And we're really beginning to hear the rain now atop the rooftop here on Red Mountain at WVTM 13. There's West Point, there's Crane Hill. Here's the storm that's been tornado warned located in the middle of this whole area, uh, very close at this point to um, Chances Crossroad. It looks like maybe a little bit south of there, moving in this general fashion. Here's US 278 and there's Interstate 65, obviously here, and the storm is approaching now from the southwest. Let's uh, take a look at what we got here. Um, a couple of things, the uh, storm in um, Perry, big inflow notch starting to swing around. So I don't know if we'll see that warning come back or not. We could, I guess. Um, nothing new coming from the Coleman County storm. They were monitoring the storm 
near Smith Lake, and it was about um, five minutes later they decided to issue that tornado warning for that storm. Now located, um, looks like about uh, 13, 14 miles northeast of Arley in Winston County and moving very quickly off to the northeast. Stephanie. Okay, Jerry, so we, uh, we've got the one tornado warning up into parts of Coleman County right now. Um, as we widen out the view, that, is, that along with the, uh, the severe thunderstorm warning that kind of extends down into the southern part of the county, uh, we're just starting to get a new sweep of the radar coming in into uh, much of central Alabama. And again, those are the two warnings that we're kind of focused on. It looks like a lot of the rotation with this one up here into Coleman County actually looks uh, pretty broad, at least for the, uh, the moment. Actually, with the, uh, the latest scan, maybe it looks a little bit tighter, but uh, right along Highway 278 here, kind of over toward Baldwin, uh, east of Jones Chapel now, as we look at WBTM 13 Live Doppler, you can see now kind of over toward Baldwin, West Point, Vinemont, and approaching I-65. So clearly it's still west of Coleman, at least the, uh, the area of concern where uh, Doppler radar has indicated a tornado. And then uh, you can see the warning extends uh, further north and east up toward uh, Fairview as well along Highway uh, 157 and also the, the 278 corridor uh, there also under that tornado warning. Again, this is a Doppler radar indicated tornado, so we don't have any confirmation that there is a tornado on the ground with this. We go further south and the, uh, the weather is just starting to really go downhill pretty quickly now for areas just west of Birmingham. So places like McCall and Bessemer and Fairfield kind of inside the 459 corridor. It's not terrible yet, but the heavy rain, the thunder and lightning, very strong wind. Even though these storms are not currently uh, warned, uh, there could be some very strong wind with them as they start to move closer into a Bessemer and kind of the Hoover area as they start to shift to the east and inside that 459 corridor there. I'm uh, kind of looking at the, uh, the wide view again, and as we look at the thunder and lightning data right now, most of it is confined to this storm down here into Perry County, uh, and it looked like for at least a moment that there were, um, we had started to see a little bit of strengthening with this storm down here into Perry County, so we'll have to watch this very carefully as they may issue a, uh, decide to issue perhaps another tornado warning uh, from that, um, from that particular storm. So uh, as we look at the big picture, again, we've got a couple of warnings that are in place right now. The, uh, the one, the severe thunderstorm warning up in the parts of uh, Coleman County and also at least for a small part of that line, a, um, a tornado warning as well. Uh, the watch, we've cleared some of the counties. The, uh, the National Weather Service has cleared some of the counties from the watch, mainly the western counties as that threat has ended. And so now we're starting to see uh, kind of the threat uh, get closer to the I-65 corridor and now start to shift a little bit further to the east. A lot of the lightning data, though, really kind of confined to those two storms that we're closely watching, the Warren storm into Coleman County, and then, of course, the one down into uh, to Perry County as well. As far as East Alabama, things have been relatively quiet so far for Gadsden, Anniston, down toward uh, Mumford, Talladega. Those areas have been pretty quiet. We're now starting to see the main action get a little bit closer to the, uh, to the I-65 corridor at, uh, at this point. Oak Grove. And again, the, uh, the line of stronger storms now starting to move into Shelby County, too. And so probably within the hour, we'll start to see the weather really going downhill for kind of the Birmingham, uh, Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, kind of that corridor along I-65. But currently, those storms are not under any warnings. Jerry? Thank you, Stephanie. Indeed, those storms are coming in from the southwest, and obviously we're seeing the rain pick up in much of uh, Jefferson County, and that trend will continue here for a while in Birmingham and surrounding areas. The one active tornado warning is up here in Coleman County. It includes West Point. It includes the city of Coleman. It doesn't quite include Good Hope. That's a little bit south of the warned area. But here's where it is, right up here in the northern part of Coleman County, moving from southwest to northeast here, eventually getting up into Morgan County, and that's why the warning is up there too. Uh, this storm doesn't look as organized as some of the ones we followed tonight. It does look like on the velocity data there were some pretty decent winds with it, so I think that's one of the indications that uh, that's one of the reasons the warning was issued. It is moving from southwest to northeast and very quickly at that. Uh, we're seeing more thunder now, hearing more thunder, seeing more lightning advance eastward toward the city of Birmingham. We're hearing that here at Top Red Mountain. 
If you've been sleeping and the thunder is waking you up, Jerry Tracy here at WVTM 13, along with meteorologist Stephanie Walker and Harmony Mendoza. We continue to track these storms, all part of the uh, Palm Sunday weekend severe weather outbreak here in 2019 in the Deep South. It started off in Texas early on Saturday morning and devastation there from an EF3, at least an EF3 tornado and two fatalities that we know of. Two young children, 1813, killed in the back seat of a car when the debris fell on it. Uh, the two passengers in the front seat apparently escaped that kind of serious injury. Um, but that's where it started. It moved eastward during the day, Louisiana, Mississippi. Bad damage last night in Aberdeen in Mississippi, in Monroe County. Uh, we understand two fatalities there uh, with some people missing, too. No further reports have come in, but they're busy. I mean, they're dealing with people who are hurt, and they got to they gotta clean up things before they worry about reporting to us. Um, and... Uh, then we go further on and we find that the storms are now in Jefferson County, a touchdown near Hagler or in Hagler in southeastern Tuscaloosa County. Still efforting to see how significant that was, but there was some structural damage along with tree and power line damage. That storm very quickly went from being a tornado to just, just being a regular thunderstorm. Um, and now that's moving into uh, much of um, Shelby and Jefferson counties. You can see in Jefferson County here, we have rain falling along I-459. It's pouring down rain at the intersection of I-5920 and I-459, raining hard. Old Tuscaloosa Highway 2, obviously getting some heavy downpours here. This is all advancing northeastward now, so we're going to see the rain increase a lot along I-65 and surrounding areas as this whole thing kind of whipsaws in from the southwest. Some lightning and thunder with it too, not as extensive as it was earlier, but you know, thunder at night always sounds very ominous and tends to wake people up. Um, and so a lot of folks perhaps getting up with this as it moves on through. There's a close-up view of the area around um, uh, the Bibb, Shelby County line. The storm's just ready to come across. Shelby County, Helena surrounding areas will get it first, and then it'll move into Alabaster and Pelham as it continues on eastward. Here's a view back in Bibb County, and obviously in Centerville, it's raining and raining pretty hard. Partridge Street getting some heavy downpours at the current time, but it's raining even harder on Mill Street. And you can zoom in like this, um, when you have live data. When you don't have live data, you really can't do that because it, was, it would be um, out of date and it wouldn't look right. Aldean Street, that's pretty amazing because the name of the street I grew up in many years ago was Aldean Street. I didn't know there was another one, but there is. Belcher Street as well, getting some heavy rains. And uh, still rain and thunderstorms back in Tuscaloosa, but from Tuscaloosa on west, we're not concerned about severe weather anymore. That threat seems to be over with. Lots of lightning, and this has been uh, a continuous thing. Loads of lightning all through this part of Perry County. It's just getting bombarded with lightning and thunder all over the place, as you can see. That's moving northeast, too. So that will eventually come to the western uh, Chilton County, already beginning to do that as this whole area swings in from the southwest. Looks to me like the forward motion of the line has slowed a bit, and I guess that could mean this could linger long enough, maybe lead to some uh, local inc instances of flooding, perhaps, with this as it comes along from the southwest. Let's check out the latest here in Coleman County, and the um, tornado warning has been canceled for Coleman and Morgan counties as of about um, 30 seconds ago. That warning was canceled. Uh, it didn't, when we first looked at it, the velocity data looked fairly impressive in the sense that it looked like there were some pretty strong winds. Didn't necessarily look like there was that much of a couplet with it, and I think that's why they canceled the tornado warning. But the severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect, uh, remains in effect for that area. In the Hartzell area now, getting some reports of power outage at Gum Springs Road east of Hartzell. That's up north in Morgan County, so that's north of our coverage area. Um, but scattered reports of power outages up there, too. So here's this Coleman County uh, squall line. Stephanie put the numbers on it here and putting the uh, path on it here. That should make a close approach to uh, um, Johnson's Crossing about 347, Hansville about 4 a.m., Holly Pond 418 a.m., Baileyton about 419 a.m. as this storm continues to press eastward. And you're going to get very heavy rains from this, torrential downpours, and just generally poor conditions over the course of the next um, hour or so. Uh, and I think we do have lightning turned on here, Steph, so there's not much lightning up north. Is that right? There's a little bit, yeah, but there's not some much. Okay, there is some back to the west here around Addison and Arley, so that's marching eastward too. So some lightning and thunder with this likely as well. 
I believe now we have Harmony Mendoza, who I think has some video of some of the damage that occurred earlier. Harmony. Absolutely, Jerry, and it's important to understand that we have seen damage from these storms, and that's why we continue to track them with our WBTM 13 live Doppler radar, because we know that these storms have a history of producing these types of weather situations. Check out our first video. Now, this is a woman and a girl that were rescued from rising water. This is in Mississippi. The SUV went into the flooded ditch, and the water was so high, the driver couldn't even see where they were going. Now, both folks are expected to, okay, to be okay, but it is critical when you see floodwaters being an issue in your neighborhood. Jerry just mentioned that as the slow forward moving speeds of these storms continue to be an issue, we could see the flood risk exacerbate. So check this out. This is storm damage from Vicksburg, Mississippi. You can see this gas station here and several structures and probably some stuff that wasn't hunkered down surrounding the gas station and all of the storm debris, including metal on the ground, parts of the gas station roof collapsed there right uh, some of their goods uh, kind of smashed over. You can see shopping carts and uh, just at least one person was injured from that particular video there. That is in Vicksburg, Mississippi, right around where the Mississippi River takes a big turn. Another area, this is Franklin, Texas. Now this is storm damage from Saturday. This is the same storm system. This uh, tornado that was reported, recovery efforts already underway. Jerry mentioning this looks more like EF3 and potentially even stronger as the storm center goes down there and actually assesses the damage because right now cleanup is already underway but this is going to be of course look at the damage right there you can see some buildings are leveled um, others have looks looks like they have uh, potentially collapsed uh, several of those branches are just snapped in half and that is from Texas all part of the same weather system that we're dealing with right now Th this is another area we want to show you about this is an elementary school uh, a gym this is also so in Alto, Texas, where the gymnasium is almost destroyed, the entire uh, in, inward section of the gymnasium has just fallen down. Several houses, too, in the area were also damaged. Down trees and power lines in the area. And one of the things that is always very common, this is a Cherokee County in sections of Texas, is that some of the flying debris will actually aid as kind of missiles uh, in the atmosphere, and they will charge into other objects like houses, and that will cause even more significant damage. That's why it's so critical when Stephanie's picking out those uh, debris signatures and, and potentially uh, seeing some of that updraft flow. Jerry's been mentioning it all morning, talking about just how high some of those uh, updrafts are, and that is indicating the potential for some rotation. And that's what we're trying to look for right now. This is our WBTM 13 live Doppler, still Coleman County an issue, and we're watching a new warning that's out to our south as well, Jerry. Yeah, we're getting this out. Uh, this is... Um a new warning coming out for Perry County at 3.27 a.m., which is two minutes ago. A confirmed tornado located nine miles east of Heiberger or 13 miles northeast of Marion, moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. Uh, the original warning was issued at 3.26 and followed up immediately um, at 3.27 by uh, the observed tornado signal, which means they must have had uh, confirmation on radar, and there it is, the debris tracker. Uh, several years ago when... Um, we start, first started using this. Uh, we didn't know at the time how significant the correlation coefficient would be, but it's turned out to be an extremely accurate indicator of a tornado because what tornadoes do is that they lift things up and then eventually gravity takes over and those things fall back down to the ground again. When that happens, it shows up like this. What it means simply is that it's not the same kind of stuff that's falling. If it were just all raindrops, it would all look uniform. The colors would not vary. We're getting different things falling. Now, that could be in a forested area. It might be branches, twigs, leaves, anything like that. Or it could sometimes be parts of buildings. So that's why it's very significant. And we do see a bit of a couplet here showing up, too. It's not extremely well-defined. But we have that combined with that indication of the observed damage or observed debris on the debris tracker. And you can pretty much count on the fact that at least at one moment, a tornado was on the ground and quite possibly still is heading toward Alabama 219 here from southwest to northeast. Now, it looks like that's already displaced quite a bit. 
Remember, again, when we switch to our radar, you're looking at live data, so it's going to be displaced from where the uh, uh, National Weather Service data is just because that isn't live. That's uh, two minutes old, three minutes old, four minutes old. But in any event, we're in here now. We had this storm moving northeast, confirmed tornado with it, and that's moving northeastward through that part of Perry County, and eventually that will come northeastward as well, crossing northeastward as time goes on, uh, further north uh, uh, up into portions of um, Bibb County, and quite possibly extreme western Chilton County, maybe eventually up into Shelby County as well as it continues on northeastward. Pretty good uh, rumble of thunder there atop Red Mountain as some of these storms move through. The Coleman County tornado warning has been canceled. It's now a severe thunderstorm warning. There's a look now out over the city of Birmingham. Obviously, it's raining hard. That's why there's some uh, obscuration of the uh, lights as we look north over the city. And it's also lightning and thundering from time to time, too. There's a close-up view of downtown Birmingham, including Regents Field, 5th Avenue South, 7th Avenue North. And no surprise, it's wet. That's what we would expect to see. Some of the heavier rains are just down to the southwest and pushing northeastward. Uh, some of the more intense rainfall is now just beginning to enter Jefferson and Shelby counties from the west. So the rain picking up in Helena, that trend will continue, and that will spread across Highway 31, Pelham, Alabaster, surrounding areas, um, River Chase and surrounding areas, too, as um, we go through that part of Shelby County. Okay, a look now at Old Cahaba Way and Old Cahaba Parkway getting wet and getting wetter as time goes on. This is uh, moving from southwest to northeast here, approaching the Hoover area, approaching Pelham 2. Here's some of that cloud to ground lightning down to the south. Quite impressive from parts of Chilton County on through Perry County up into southern Bibb County. Uh, frequent cloud to ground lightning in through here, unfortunately waking a lot of folks up on this Palm Sunday morning. And that's advancing toward US 82. So the rain is coming down hard there. As you go west, it becomes more spotty, as you can see. And we're not really concerned about severe weather from this point on. From Tuscaloosa County on westward, we think that's pretty much the threat there is pretty much died off. But still an effect here in that part of Perry County and surrounding areas, too. The reports, the damage reports we've had admittedly have been spotty. They haven't been very concentrate, concentrated around the Hagler area near the Volunteer Fire Department. Some damage done there up in uh, Walker County now in the city of Corona. We have trees down on Highway 18 near Patton Hill Road in Oakman from gradient winds ahead of the actual storm. So that was not associated with the tornado. And we also have the Hagler report, trees and power lines down near Hagler, a volunteer fire department, possible structural damage too. A lot of these reports, remember, it's the middle of the night, it's raining, it's nasty outside, so the reports tend to come in slow, and that's completely understandable given the conditions people are facing. At the Mercedes plant, trees down on Wire Road between Vance and Coaling, that storm passing just west of the Mercedes plant a short time ago, and also off to the west we go, uh, Cedarville in Hale County, trees down across the road at Highway 69 and County Road 16, that would be down here in southern Hale County when that storm came through too. As you can see, not a real concentrated area of reports. And it's interesting because it was thought maybe for a while there that straight line winds would be a major part of this. Turns out that hasn't been a very big part. Uh, it's usually been either tornadic winds or not much else. Monroe County in Mississippi, uh, at least two fatalities with people still missing. This is a very serious situation. It was an impressive looking storm on the radar when it came through Saturday evening. And uh, sure enough, our worst fears are realized. At least two people killed in the town of Hamilton, and there may be others depending on uh, what happens with those missing people. Reports of structural damage and trees down on Peterson Circle north of Highway 25. That's also in, that's in Winston County, Mississippi. Bethedon, that community there, hit hard at 11.04 p.m. So that's about uh, four and a half hours ago when that storm came through. So a smattering of reports, most serious over here, but also some reports in Alabama too. The main line of storms now approaching, among other places, Hoover, and our own Sarah Killian is right there in Hoover. Uh, I think the worst of it's just to the west of you, Sarah, but it's moving eastward toward you. Good to know, Jerry. And we're really starting to hear the rumbles of thunder and some very impressive lightning heading this way. The thunder's getting louder. And this lightning, I can't stress enough how impressive it's been. I mean, it's almost blinding. It's so bright in the sky. Now, the rain is really steady here in the area. Now, one thing, this wind has uh, died down just a little bit. I want to point to these uh, flags that are here behind me. They were really whipping around just a few minutes ago. Obviously, you can see right now they're kind of, they're uh, no longer whipping around like they were. But the rain getting a 
lot stronger here. It's coming down much heavier. And again, that thunder and lightning, we can, uh, it's really getting louder. So as you mentioned, it's heading west and uh, we're we're definitely feeling that here in Hoover, but we're going to continue to keep an eye on things. Not hearing any reports of damage in the area just yet, but of course, as that storms move through, that could change. So we're going to continue to keep an eye on this and keep you updated. Back to you, Jerry. All right, Sarah, thank you so much for your excellent reporting, and please do your best to stay dry and stay safe, too, as you're out there. We want to update you on what's going on down to the south. You know about the Perry County warning that came out a short time ago, immediately followed up with the Bibb County tornado warning here. You see US 82. Here's the warning here. So it's the southeastern part of Bibb County. At this point, it's well east of Centerville and well southeast of West Blockton. Tornado warning till 415 a.m., so about another 40, 45 minutes, something like that. For, for this storm coming out of Perry County and coming northeastward. And uh, this is confirmed, again, this is a, con, a confirmed tornado based on the radar, based on the uh, correlation coefficient showing us that something's been lifted up and it's being brought back down to the ground. This is the debris tracker now. And uh, here's the area right in through here in which we have evidence, strong evidence, that something has been picked up by a tornado and is now being uh, dropped back down to the ground. If the colors were uniform, that would indicate that probably it's just raindrops falling, but since it's not, and the couplet here is very, very well organized and very, very well defined. That's one of the best velocity couplets we've seen in this event so far, so that looks quite well defined. Uh, that warning, obviously, uh, being issued because of this, that's moving northeast, so that will be affecting you folks in the southeastern part of Bibb County over the next 40, 45 minutes or so. Um, with that storm here moving northeastward up into Bibb County. There's the warning area now. Um, you can see Adler's in the area, or I should say um, it is southeast of Centerville, US 82 right in through here, Alabama 139. Most of the action is coming up from Perry County in this general fashion, so it'll be entering Bibb County here very shortly and then crossing northeastward like so. Now, if we assume that thing holds together, it might eventually wind up in Shelby County or perhaps northern Chilton County. And again, it may not. Uh, there, one thing that has not occurred at all with this event have been long track tornadoes. They've been tending to be fairly brief, not lasting all that long. That's been the case since Texas early Saturday morning and right up to the current time. And I would imagine that might continue a while longer. But in any event, there it is in uh, in uh, just Perry County, but getting ready to cross over into Bibb County here very shortly and moving on northeastward. Among the communities that will be affected would be Sand Mountain, as you can see, as those storms continue up. There's the warning in Bibb County. Here's the motion of the storm moving up into northern Chilton County as well as southern Shelby County, uh, places like Calera and also Columbiana and surrounding areas too. Uh, moving northeast at 48 miles per hour. Some of the places affected, Jemison maybe at 407. Uh, Calera about 414, and um, generally speaking, moving in that general fashion, getting probably to I-65 here in about um, 25 minutes or so. There's the uh, indication of the storm right in through there. Now, again, it doesn't mean it's, it's picking up pieces of buildings. It may be picking up tr tree branches or anything like that, but it's something other than raindrops falling from the sky, and that indicates debris of some kind. Um, from this storm. Here it is right here, Oak Mulgee off to the northeast, this storm moving northeast, and in uh, Perry County the warning goes to 4 a.m. Uh, from this storm, right in this general vicinity, moving on northeastward here pretty quickly as well, and getting up into uh, Bibb County fairly soon. That's where the storm is. Here's the radar site at the National Weather Service in Calera. Here's Bibb County. Uh, Centerville is just west of there, so currently not under this warning, but that warning advancing on toward the northeast with this storm as it does move in that general fashion. Here's US 82. Here is the southeastern part of Bibb County, Alabama 139. So the storm moving up from Perry County into Bibb County here over the near term. There's the general area of circulation with the storm right in through here, probably very close to the Bibb Perry County line and uh, moving northeast from there as we go northeastward here. Intense storm here. Lots of lightning and thunder with it too, and that's moving northeast as well. There's Shelby County. In fact, most of the lightning right now is kind of lined up in that general fashion. So it's hitting places like Alabaster Hard, Pelham, Helena. Not so much right now north of Hoover. Most of it's from Hoover on southward. Um, but the general rains are crossing the city of Birmingham at this point. And uh, that's the heaviest rain moving across uh, the Magic City. And that trend will continue. So we'll watch this storm. And one of the reasons this is happening is there is so much wind shear just all over the place. 
and those numbers are very high, about as high as we ever see them, and that's why these storms are able to organize and regenerate, and that's why they sometimes rotate and can put down tornadoes. may not be long-lasting ones, but they can put down a tornado. Uh, for the Coleman County storm, basically moving like it is, that would place it near Fairview, or place the squall line near Fairview at 349, Bellyton about 405, Arab 419, Holly Pond 425 as this line of storms moves eastward. Coleman County at this point getting some heavy rains with this, and uh, that rain is all passing off toward the east, and that trend will certainly continue uh, with this storm. All right, let's see, nothing really new with the um, Bibb County storm, still the same information with that. So that's um, nothing new. We're trying to, they purposely drew it up to try to avoid uh, Chilton County, and the reason they do that is to cut down on the perceived false alarm rate at some point, maybe you have to issue one for Chilton, but if you don't have to, you might hold back on it for now just to get a chance to see a few more scans with the radar to see what happens with that because you don't want to over-issue or issue more warnings than need be. And it looks to me like this particular area of concern, and it is an area of concern, it looks like a pretty well-defined couple of, or pretty well-defined uh, debris tracker may just miss Chilton County. It's going to be a very close call as this moves northeastward, but it may just miss Chilton County as it heads northeastward up into uh, Bibb County here very shortly, the area west of Sand Mountain. Um, from this storm right in through here, it appears like the tornado is picking stuff up and dropping it down, and we're not seeing just raindrops in there. We're seeing some other things, too. Doesn't mean it's necessarily a structural damage. It may be tree limbs. It may be tree branches or anything like that. Um, but there's where the storm is, and that's how it's moving northeastward. The couplet doesn't look quite as well defined as it did a short time ago, but um, certainly the debris signature still looks very defined, and that's about ready to cross over from uh, Perry County up into Bibb County and approaching US 82 here. Uh, the correlation coefficient at 0.54, not extremely high, but still none, nonetheless um, uh, low enough, I should say, to indicate the likelihood that there's been a tornado there and it's picking up debris. There's the overall view of things. There's the um, more traditional way of looking at the WVTM 13 live Doppler. Here is the uh, tornado warning for Perry County. Here's the one for Bibb County, that storm moving northeastward, uh, crossing US 82 here pretty soon and continuing northeast of there, spreading heavy rain with it and um, generally very poor conditions. And we're hearing the rain pick up in intensity here atop Red Mountain as well, pouring down rain at the current time as the meat of these storms begins to move through. And that's it right in through here. Once this big band moves through, it's still going to rain at times, and there may still be a rumble of thunder once in a while, but I think this big band kind of represents the um, uh, main hurrah with this line of uh, thunderstorms or with the area of thunderstorms, and we'll get intense rainfall with that for a while. Once that comes through and settles down, we should be in better shape overall going forward. Could you repeat, please? Stephanie, over to you. Okay, hey, Jerry. So uh, the main line now is, uh, like Jerry mentioned, starting to come through the metro area here from Birmingham down toward I-65 in a parts of Shelby County. Uh, as we look at WVTM 13 live Doppler, some of the worst of the weather now starting to impact the Hoover and Pelham areas. You can see most of the lightning, though, is down into parts of Shelby County. So that may not bode well for folks who are trying to sleep from uh, uh, Pelham down toward Alabaster. You can see some of the heaviest rain now just starting to approach uh, those areas kind of west of I-65. We go down a little bit further, down closer to uh, Montevallo and Calir, and it looks like Montevallo, uh, you are not under a warning. We're still under a watch here in Shelby County, uh, but it does look like the rain has really started to come down pretty heavily there. Lots of thunder and lightning, and I would suspect some very gusty winds too. Down toward Calira, Jemison, the worst of the weather is still just to your west, but it is gonna be headed your direction here before too long. Again, Chilton County currently not under a warning. That could change, but it looks like with the uh, tornado warning there back into Bibb County that that storm may actually stay just west of, uh, of Chilton County. And as of now, the tornado warning does not extend into Shelby County. So folks uh, who should be in their place of safety from Briarfield all the way south and west down toward Ashby, kind of along Highway 139 there, Oakley and Six Mile, and then down near Bib Mile, I'm sorry, Bib Mill rather, Trio Highway 82, those areas. Uh, you folks should already be in your safe place, in the basement, in an interior room with the, uh, the Doppler radar. And at one point it was confirmed 
a, a confirmed tornado on the ground there. Let's see if we've gotten a new signature in. And no, it looks like the uh, the debris tracker is still showing that in extreme northern Perry County. So it doesn't look like we've gotten an updated uh, image in for the uh, the debris tracker. That being said, Oh, okay. Oh, they sure did. So apparently that storm is weakened enough that they've actually canceled that warning now for both Pibb and Perry County. So that's certainly some good news. And we've kind of seen a lot of this, a lot of the, the warnings, especially tornado warnings, the, well, the one exception, the Tuscaloosa uh, warning, but a lot of the tornado warnings have been fairly quick where the, the storms will kind of tighten up and then it, it's almost like they fall apart or at least they weaken. Uh, and that's kind of the trend that we've been seeing. And so there's a, a kind of a wide view. And again, you can see the, the most intense part of the line, the leading edge of it where we have seen uh, it produced some severe weather this morning is now just kind of right on top of the I-65 corridor, at least in Jefferson County, Shelby County. So it won't be too long, Jerry, before the threat uh, actually ends for the metro area. Uh, very true, Stephanie. In fact, uh, right now, the National Weather Service is looking to clear at least Winston County from the tornado watch, perhaps Walker County as well. Threat seems to have diminished, and the bib storm just played weakened. That's why they canceled the warning for there, too. Um, like you were saying, some of this heaviest rain located in this band from I-65 on southwestward through western Shelby County and points southward, and that's the one that's coming through us right now, top Red Mountain. That's why we can see some of that heavy rain in the Hoover area, as you can see. We're having to dry off the camera lens once in a while because it's raining so hard, uh, but the rain coming down hard at the current time, this is kind of like the, um, uh, in a sense, the last hurrah with this. I think you could say that. There's still some rain west of here, but this is the main part of it, and it's pouring down rain in much of the metro area at this point. Um, rain coming down heavily, as you can see, 7th Avenue North, surrounding areas too. As you expand the view and look further west, we find still pot, uh, patchy rain back to the west in Tuscaloosa County, but not nearly as organized. Um, but in the Hoover area, still coming down hard. Rocky Ridge 2, I-65, it's just coming down very heavily. Highway 31 too, the rain coming down in torrents right now, really in sheets of rain. And around the Galleria, a, temp, a little area where it's not raining all that hard, but basically another swath of heavy rain is going to come in from the southwest and make it uh, very wet there for a while, at least in the near term anyway, some of that coming through and some of it being quite heavy. So we're still dealing with some of these downpours. We still have, I guess, the active severe thunderstorm warning in Coleman County. I think that's correct. And we still um, have obviously some heavy rains coming in with a lot of lightning. Now, the lightning seems to be especially centered from about Hoover on southward, not as much north of there. There's some, but not as much. That seems to be the main concentration of it. And we still do have that warning in effect in Coleman County. Had been a tornado warning at one point for part of the county, now just a, a severe thunderstorm warning. Um, but also heavy downpours in eastern Walker County, west of Jasper, the weather improving just a bit. Um, but still raining very hard from, uh, let's say, Gardendale on southward through the city of Birmingham and points south of there down into Shelby County. And you can see some of that rain on the street pouring very hard, lightning, occasional lightning and thunder too, obviously showing up as well. All right, looking at the overall view of things, we find uh, all this advancing toward the east and northeast. The individual cells move northeast while the line itself moves more toward the east. But um, breaks up a little bit in Tuscaloosa County, breaks up a little bit further west too. It's at the very back edge is now on the Mississippi-Alabama state line. And, uh, west of there, it's it's dry and the weather's improving. Should point out, though, that once this all comes through, going to be some pretty strong gusty winds during the day Sunday into Sunday evening. Winds may gust as high as 30 or 35 miles per hour, so be ready for that possibility. It may be quite windy, um, I think, during the afternoon. And there is some of that lightning. Here's the Pelham area. There's some of the lightning down to the south. Obviously still a factor here, too. Um, but um, as you can see, Simsville Road, it is pouring down rain or on Highway 31, I-65, surrounding areas too, uh, just pouring down rain at this point. No warnings with it. It doesn't look like it's a severe storm, but it is making it rain very hard. And there's a close-up view of southwestern uh, Shelby County, Montevallo, that university campus, very pretty campus, is wet tonight as the rain continues to fall heavily. Spring Creek Road too, Doster Drive, Highway 73, Highway 204, all in the midst of this heavy rain that's also falling in eastern sections of Bibb County as well. 
all in the eastern part of Bibb County, not so much over the west, but mainly in the eastern part. Chilton County, uh, at this point, uh, the rain is beginning to pick up from the west as we see some of the lightning there. And um, it looks like in Chilton County, getting to Jemison about 422 or about 30 minutes from now, getting to uh, Thorsby about 435, Mineral Springs 445. That's when the rain will really pick up and come down very, very hard. In Helena at this point, the wind is picking up over Helena. Some gusty winds there, not associated necessarily with anything more than this thunderstorm, but nonetheless, Helena getting pretty windy as well, as um, not surprising the storms move through from the west. So there's your main line of storms now, extending from Birmingham down through uh, Shelby County, down into eastern Bibb County, down into Perry County as well, and that continues to march on toward the east. There'll be some lightning and thunder with this and some very heavy rains as this all comes in. And I want to read this one thing that's just issued out of the uh, Weather Prediction Center. Um, some of this may be training, and I'm wondering if they're thinking, well, we don't have that forecast in yet, I guess. I was looking, Steph, they, uh, I, I know a, a precipitation discussion has come in, I'm wondering if they're thinking some of these storms may start to train over the same areas for a while, perhaps leading to some flooding issues. I certainly think that could happen just as hard as it's raining, maybe in some of the poor drainage areas. Also, of, uh, of note, wind starting to pick up in Helena, and so it must be that uh, we're seeing some velocity data perhaps um, showing some of the uh, the wind starting to increase a little bit there in, uh, in Shelby County. So, Again, no warnings with any of these storms right now as we show you on WVTM 13 Live Doppler, but there's a pretty good line of thunderstorms now extending from Coleman County down through I-65 through much of Shelby County, uh, down toward uh, Calera, Montevallo, and then approaching the, uh, the Chilton County area as well. So plenty of thunder and lightning too, especially from the, uh, the storms or at least the line of uh, storms going through Shelby County right now. Uh, down there along I-65, kind of now crossing over the I-65 corridor, there's a decent amount of thunder and lightning, not severe, certainly some strong wind, I would bet uh, or suspect with some of these storms. Just downstream from this, though, Chelsea along Highway 280, Vincent, Vandiver, all of those areas will be getting some of this rough weather here before too long as it starts to shift a little bit further to the, um, to the east. And so the only warning that we still have in effect looks to be the uh, the Coleman County warning uh, for the uh, the severe thunderstorm warning. And I feel like we've been talking about that storm now for quite some time. So it could very well be, Jerry, like you mentioned, maybe the line is slowing down just a little bit. Um, perhaps uh, that's why they issued the uh, the precipitation discussion to uh, to maybe indicate it is slowing down a little bit maybe. And so some heavier downpours could lead to maybe some localized flash flooding. But from Fairview, Looks like that severe storm is now actually east of Coleman, but Hansville, you are just downstream from that severe storm in Coleman County and just really areas kind of east of I-65 in the southern part of the county as well under a, uh, a severe thunderstorm warning. There's a look at the uh, Shelby County part of the line though, and that is probably one of the meaner parts of the, uh, the entire line now starting to move through that section of, uh, of Shelby County. And in Bibb County, too, that uh, that part of the line could probably contain some pretty strong wind as well. We look at the uh, big picture again, Jerry, and um, I do think that they suggested that they were going to start removing some additional counties from the watch. And it does look like they have now removed Walker and Winston County. So it looks like the threat has ended for those areas also. Steph, I, I got a chance to read some of the uh, discussion about the rainfall rates, and there's still over two inches of rain per hour in some areas. So there is some concern about flooding, and you're seeing that exactly now. That's in the city of Hoover. And I would say it's raining pretty hard, and I would say that rain is uh, obviously pooling on the road surface there, the parking lot in this particular case, but that's how hard it's coming down. You can also see occasional lightning as well, but pouring down rain, some strong gusty winds too. And uh, that's the way it looks in the middle of this line that's kind of slowly decaying now as it moves through I-65 and surrounding areas. Like Stephanie was saying, they've removed many counties from the severe weather watch, but that doesn't mean we don't have the weather issue of the rain. There's some of the rain now, as you can see, in um, sections of Shelby County up into uh, the Hoover area, raining very, very hard. And um, let's go a little further north up into Jefferson County, too, if we can, Steph, just to see some of this rain in the Hoover, yeah, all lined up along here, basically from I-65 on southward. And as we put it into motion, 
we'll see that even though it's still technically moving eastward, it's not that much, not that quickly. And uh, I don't know where it will finally settle up, but it may well be over central Shelby County or someplace like that where this rain persists for quite some time and maybe the rainfall amounts will be appreciable. It, you know, it's not going to last all day Sunday. It's not going to do that, but it might last for a few hours and cause a problem. As you can see, some of these rainfall totals, five and a half inches per hour, 4.05 inches per hour. Now, they did mention after looking at some of these numbers coming out of Birmingham, they said, you know, some of it may be hail contaminated, so it may not be quite as big as this. But either way, it's a lot of rain and it's falling heavily. And the heaviest seems to be, again, like we saw with the lightning, the heaviest rain seems to be from Hoover on southward. 3.65 inches uh, in the Hoover area, 4.75 inches in Shelby County in the area just southwest of Pelham. So Helena and Pelham and Alabaster, those areas getting hit hard by the heavy rain and the totals so far have not been extremely excessive, but they've been 1.3 inches here in West Jefferson County, about an inch to the north near, um, well, east of Pleasant Grove, about 1.2 inches, southwestern part of Shel uh, Jefferson County, and um, just generally speaking, some healthy rainfall totals. Now, back here, we're not too concerned about it because even though the amounts are bigger, three to four inches, their rain has diminished, and they're out of the main area where this consistent rain is falling, and they'll continue to be out of that area. The rainfall totals, though, were quite amazing, 4.6 inches in Greene County, and you may add a little bit more to that, 3.8 inches in southeastern Hale County. That's close to where that uh, supercell thunderstorm tracked through, 3.6 inches over the northwestern part of Pickens County. Back here, the rain has diminished, so that trend will continue. Here we still have this um, band of rain moving through, Birmingham on points on southward, heavy downpours with that, um, and that's still crossing the area and still causing you know, torrential rains outside. It is just a soaker out there at the current time. This is moving east gradually. And finally now, they're getting some rain over the eastern part of the state. Aniston Gaston getting some rain. It's not heavy rain, but it is raining. And uh, that trend should continue too. Uh, the rain around Gardendale, as you can see, it's approaching Trussville. I know it's already raining there, but the heavier downpours also leads. That's coming up in the southwest and uh, all moving in. Uh, from west to east across the area. Highway 75 and 79 both getting rain and some of that rain moving to center point too. Um, there's down to the south in uh, the Birmingham metro, everywhere from Birmingham down I-65 to Hoover. It's just plain wet and this is moving eastward and moving eastward um, steadily. Trustville in about three or four minutes it'll arrive there. In Leeds about 411. In uh, Margaret about 431. Um, Odenville 446 and Vincent 451 or about um, 50 minutes from now, that's when some of the heavier rains will move in as this moves in from the west. We're approaching the 4 o'clock hour here at WVTM 13. Jerry Tracy here along with meteorologist Stephanie Walker and Harmony Mendoza. We're tracking these storms moving east. This has been the Palm Sunday weekend uh, severe weather outbreak for the Deep South. It started in Texas early Saturday morning, advanced to Mississippi Saturday evening, and now it's over Alabama. We've seen one tornado touching down that we know of in the Hagler vicinity in southeastern Tuscaloosa County, and that storm just barely missing the Mercedes plant a short time later. Maplesville will get some of this heavier downpours at 411, um, Thorsby at 428, Vincent 444, and Clanton about 4.55 a.m. as this moves in from the west along this heavy band in through here. Intense cloud to ground lightning up in the Pelham area moving toward Chelsea and pretty intense lightning as well down in southeastern Bibb County, and that's moving on east. Uh, tornado watch has now been canceled for Walker and Winston County, um, but continues for the counties further east, and um, that trend will continue for a while as the heavy rain continues to fall here atop Red Mountain. It is just plain wet outside. The rain continues to come down very, very heavily at the current time, and about on schedule too. We, we kind of thought most of the bad stuff would be between 3 and 5 a.m., in Birmingham, it is, that's working out fairly well. You can see some of those images from Hoover and Birmingham. In, in the case of the Magic City, the rain is heavy enough to obscure some of the city lights. In the case of Hoover, it's just plain ponding of water on that parkway, on that uh, driver's lot, or <laughs> parking lot, and uh, also pretty windy too. It looks like the rain's coming in sheets and being driven by the wind in that part of Hoover. So nasty time of it all coming through. And a lot of people are sleeping, obviously. So in that respect, it's coming through at the right time of day. But there's um, another view of that rain coming in from the southwest. And the rainfall rate, obviously, appreciable. 3.35 inches of rain, maybe 3.5 inches of rain, 2.80, 2.20. Doesn't mean it will last an entire hour, so the amounts may not be that great. But nonetheless, 
Um, and once in a while, you have to clean the camera lens if you want to keep showing the video. <laughs> that was the case there. But in any event, uh, Stephanie Walker, it is raining hard here at Top Red Mountain. It really is. So the uh, the strongest part of the line now, Jerry, has made it to the I-65 corridor. And it looks like once this is through, the threat is really going to diminish uh, for the Birmingham metro area down through Hoover and parts of Shelby County. The National Weather Service has said they will hold on to the tornado watch for Jefferson and Shelby counties uh, through uh, 5 p.m., so through at least the next hour uh, until we uh, really good and get this line through much of those areas. As you go a little further south, though, it does look like for Bibb County and Chilton County, Chilton County, you're about to start to, uh, to see at least the worst of this part of the line moving into your area. So kind of approaching Highway 31, close to Jemison and Thorsby. I know it's raining there now, but the worst of the weather has just, uh, has just started to enter into the county and will be reaching you probably within the next uh, 30 to, uh, to 60 minutes. So um, coming down very, very hard now. Rainfall rates uh, three to four inches per hour. Uh, we do still have the one severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Northeast Alabama, Northeast Coleman County. They've actually trimmed that warning back just a little bit as we um, could still see some very strong, maybe damaging straight line winds with this storm. Uh, we looked at the, uh, the velocity data from the Huntsville uh, Doppler radar, and you can still see it shows some pretty strong wind there. And so that would be the reason that they are keeping that warning for a sliver of northeastern Coleman County. That does still include Fairview. Uh, it includes uh, Baileyton, Holly Pond, Walker's Corner, and New Canaan as well. Well, kind of along that uh, Highway 67 area. So. It won't be too much longer before that storm is actually out of your area. I would imagine there are a lot of folks, though, especially where we've had a lot of thunder and lightning, uh, kind of down into parts of Shelby County now, really now approaching the Highway 280 corridor over toward Chelsea. Inverness, where the, the rain is really starting to come down hard, the Highway 119 area, Liberty Park, uh, kind of heading up toward Leeds, and eventually uh, Chelsea here, it looks like we're starting to see the rain. So all in this area, we've got a decent amount of thunder and lightning, but it is coming down in buckets. Jerry? Yeah, it really is. They are looking at the uh, storms coming through Shelby County now. Um, not at this point issuing any kind of a warning with it, but it's something they're keeping an, eye, keeping an eye on for Shelby County as these storms move across. And there you see the big broad view here. We're still looking at uh, Chilton County. Heavy downpours approaching there from the west. Uh, the worst of it in Birmingham seems to be on the uh, from Birmingham on east now. Plenty of lightning in Shelby County, still loads of that. Uh, most of that just south of the city of Birmingham, most of that from Hoover on south, actually. You folks in Chelsea who have been sleeping maybe rudely awakened by the um, uh, sound of thunder here in the next few minutes as that comes across. Uh, there you see the rain falling in sheets outside here atop Red Mountain. It is pouring down rain, and that's all coming in from the west, obviously. Um, there's a view of uh, some of the winds in Shelby County, some pretty significant winds, too. And that's an area they're looking at just a bit in that part of Shelby County near Highway 280. Um, at this point, no definitive signs of anything being issued there, but we'll keep an eye on that for you. And there's that band of very heavy rain, kind of uh, bookended by Chelsea on the east side and Hoover on the west side, and it's marching on toward this direction. There's a little bit of the circulation showing up in this general vicinity, moving northeast at 50 miles per hour, roughly. That would place it close to Leeds at 428, Pell City 442, and Odenville about 443 as it continues on, moving from southwest to northeast. Intense downpours with that, and those downpours extend up along I-65 and up into Coleman County as well. The warning in Coleman County is still in effect for the northeastern part of the county. Um, we're getting about the heaviest rain we've seen so far at this point, and so here is the rain rate. It drops off dramatically west of the city, but 2.9 inches of rain per hour, 5.20 inches per hour, just in the Hoover vicinity, and again, doesn't necessarily have to last the entire hour, so the total rainfall amounts may be somewhat lower than that, but uh, 5.2 inches there just off of Hoover, and that's all moving eastward. Um, but intense downpours here, too, um, between 65 and 459 all through this area. Rainfall rates may be as high as 4.5 inches an hour, maybe 4.95 inches per hour. 
could be contaminated by hail in some cases, but that's still some pretty heavy rain. And then it drops off dramatically west of Hoover and west of 65 as we approach Bessemer and 150 goes down quite a bit. Tornado warning now in effect. Here we go. Tornado warning in effect for Jefferson, Shelby and St. Clair County till 445 p.m. A severe thunderstorm capable of causing a tornado located over Chelsea moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. So there's the warning. You see the cone. Most of it is not in most of it southeast of Birmingham, just barely touches Jefferson County, and most of it is in St. Clair County and North Shelby County. But a tornado warning in effect. Tornado warned storm located near Chelsea, moving northeast very quickly this morning. So a warning in effect for Shelby County, St. Clair County, and extreme southeastern sections of um, uh, Jefferson County as well from a possible tornado here located near Chelsea. There's the um, velocity signature on the storm there. It doesn't look especially tight, but it looks like there is some turning of the winds in through here, the area just off of 280 here in Shelby County and just off of uh, uh, Chelsea, and that's moving off toward the northeast. Heavy downpours with that, torrential downpours, in fact, and that's moving northeastward and moving in this general fashion across some 280 up to 25 and then eventually up into St. Clair County too. In this general area is the broad circulation now, very close to Chelsea along Highway 280 is the area they're looking at for the possibility of rotation and the possibility of a tornado, and that is moving off toward the northeast. There's some of the camera shots again, still pouring rain in Hoover, though not as heavy as it once was. Here we're still raining very, very hard. Um, but this is more significant, obviously, down here near Chelsea. The possibility that there could be a tornado, severe thunderstorm possibly causing a tornado, located over Chelsea, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. That warning in effect till 4.45 a.m. Uh, for the storm there in the central part of Shelby County, very close to Chelsea. Some of the area being affected by that, obviously, you can see East Saginaw, city of Chelsea itself. Here's the broad area in through here. Indian Springs Village, obviously, off to the northwest. Um, we didn't see any real indication of uh, any kind of debris tracker there as we expanded that view. But here is the storm in through here and moving northeast across 280 and eventually from there up into St. Clair County, too, um, from this storm with some rotation showing up, at least in the mid and upper levels of the storm, very close to Chelsea at the current time, very close to Highway 280 and moving off quickly to the northeast at 45 to 50 miles per hour. Possible tornado, not confirmed yet by either radar or by any kind of a sighting, but uh, something we're watching very carefully. Stephanie. Say, Jerry, now we're starting to um, get into some areas that are quite a bit more populated. A lot of the, uh, the reports that we have seen so far have been uh, in fairly unpopulated areas, the exception in Hagler, where we did have uh, of the reports of some structural damage from that confirmed tornado earlier. Uh, but now we're seeing this Doppler radar indicated tornado in Shelby County, uh, including Chelsea. Chelsea under the gun, some of the areas that are, are within the path of the storm, you can see them uh, at uh, 413, Lake Purdy, Leeds, Moody, Argo. Not all of these areas may actually be in the polygon. Uh, but if you live in Shelby County along Highway 280 and just to the east and northeast, including Chelsea, uh, maybe Vincent and, and Vandiver and Westover, you already need to be in your place of, uh, of safety. That's an interior room. If you don't have a basement, if you do, obviously in the basement away from windows and try to, uh, to find something to protect your head as well as we've got a tornado warning and Doppler radar indicated tornado warning for uh, Shelby County there into Chelsea. It looks like, Jerry, as we look at WVTM 13 live Doppler, that maybe we're trying to start to, uh, to see a little bit of a notch develop. Uh, reflectivity images have not been all that impressive uh, with a lot of these storms. Hey, Steph. All more. Yes. Tornado debris signature very near North Shelby Baptist Church at Belcher Drive and Highway 280. Okay, let's get the debris tracker up. Okay. So that would be a uh, repeat again. It's, it's very near North Shelby Baptist Church at Belcher Drive and Highway 280. 
tornado debris signature picked up there at 408 about 60 seconds ago or so. And uh, we're looking at that area now. It's This admittedly is more messy than some of the other ones we have seen, not quite as clear cut. But there's the basic idea. And what you're looking at here, if all the colors were uniform, then the same thing would be falling from the sky. That is raindrops. When you see different colors, that means different things are falling from the sky. It got there because the tornado lifted it up and then gravity takes over and brings it back down to the ground. And that appears to be happening here in the general vicinity of Highway 280. We have all this uh, different coloration going on here. So that would suggest that per probably something else has been picked up by a tornado and then is lofted into the air and then comes back down to the ground. So we're looking at the area primarily uh, near North Shelby Baptist Church, Belcher Drive and Highway 280, and it's moving toward the Highland Lakes area. The tornado is moving toward the Highland Lakes area. It's still near pretty close to Chelsea, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. So the speed, forward speed has come down somewhat. Now forward motion about 35 miles per hour in this general area. Near Girl Scout Road, Signal Valley, and over here to the west we find uh, the uh, Doppler winds or the Doppler couplet. And boy, did that change, Stephanie. That really is much more well-defined than it was a very short time ago. And that's one advantage, folks. The live data is so important in these situations because they literally can change in 30 seconds time, in 10 seconds time, it can change tremendously and that's why it's so important to have live data when possible. And here's a close up view of that storm and of the debris tracker. And again, we don't know what the debris is. It may be something ominous, it may not be, but the point is it's happening. And uh, this storm is um, in this general vicinity, moving northeastward here, very close to Highway 280 and uh, moving northeast at about 35 miles per hour. So we've seen the forward speed slow up just a bit. Not really a big surprise with that. Eventually that was going to happen. Um, there's Belcher Lane right there. There's Highway 280. And here's where the storm is located, as you can see. Also, this area is just being hit hard by heavy rain. Uh, Highland Park Drive currently getting some very heavy rain. Double Oak Way, too. Uh, all this area, beautiful country here. And at this point, um, possibility of a tornado or confirmed tornado now. And uh, there's Hugh, Hugh Daniel Drive as well as we get into Greystone. Um, so the latest we have was the TDS or tornado debris signature very close to the to North Shelby Baptist Church and Belcher Drive and Highway 280. And the storm is moving northeast at 35 miles per hour toward the Highland Lakes area. So in this general vicinity, it's uh, a little bit different than some of the other ones we've seen in that they've been a little bit less uh, noisy. This one's a bit more noisy, but there's Belcher Drive right there, Highway 280, and here's where the storm is and moving northeastward there and apparently has come down and picked something up and that's now showing up in the form of debris. And uh, we still have a pretty good couplet here showing up, maybe not quite as good as it looked a few minutes ago, but still pretty well defined. That's also moving northeastward here through that general area of, um, of Shelby County, moving toward the Highland Lakes area, crossing over 280, Fair amount of cloud to ground lightning as we zoom on into the Lake Purdy area. There's Brook Highland Drive, Greystone Way, 119, all getting some of the intense downpours as well as the cloud to ground lightning, and that's moving northeastward as well across this general area. Uh, nothing new to report, and I keep checking because it's moving, like Stephanie was saying, to a very highly populated area. So if there's something to be seen or something happens, there are going to be people there who realize that and are aware of that and uh, react to it. Hugh Daniel Drive, Greystone Way, Brook Highland uh, Drive as well, all getting that heavy rain. Here's a view of 280 here. Here is where it is moving on northeastward, getting uh, crossing over 280 here and heading off to the northeast. Here's some of the Doppler couplet here that still, it looks maybe a little less organized than it did a couple minutes ago, but still showing up. Uh, the different colors indicating different directions with the wind uh, direction within the storm itself and that's headed off northeastward. There's Highland View Drive, there's Highway 280 and 119. So this is now advancing through the northeastern part of Shelby County and uh, or moving toward northeastern part of Shelby County, but right now very close to Greystone Way and very close to the area around Graystro uh, Greystone and surrounding areas too. Highland Lakes as well. That was a couple minutes ago and the tornado now is moving through Highland Lakes as of about one minute ago or two minutes ago, moving through Highland Lakes at the current time. So a confirmed tornado in that area. Obviously, you need to keep a, think about your safe place 
and is really what you want to do is get to the lowest floor of a reasonably strong building. There's the debris signature with this or the debris tracker, and it looks pretty prominent. That means this thing has been picking up different things, and then they come down to the ground. If it were all raindrops, it would all be the same color. So we're not talking about all raindrops. We're talking about different things, including debris that's been picked up by the tornado, lofted into the air, and it comes back down by the force of gravity, and that's what we're seeing here. That's a pretty good correlation coefficient, 2.66. Not as low as it could be, but um, still pretty impressive, and that, that's moving on northeastward here. So it's picking something up, and this is a very highly populated area, so possibility of it causing that as well. All right, we also have a new tornado warning for uh, Shelby County, further south. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located over Calera, moving northeast, also at 35 miles per hour. So two, two separate tornado warnings now in effect in Shelby County. Here's the southern one. It includes Calera, it includes Columbiana, and then the northern one as well, that's in the Highland Lakes area as we speak. And as we look at some of the Doppler winds here and um, we look at that general area, here's um, a view as we look down into um, this area here. Here's Calera, here's South Calera, Shelby Springs off to the northeast. Here's the approximate area where we have the um, couplet of winds here getting ready to cross 31 and 65 here very shortly, uh, really close to the radar site, so that interferes with some of, the, um, uh, some of the parameters we can look at here. Here's a look at the intensity of the rain on the WVTM 13 Live Doppler. There you see this line of storms, and we could tell it was east of us because our rain is greatly diminished now atop Red Mountain. But here's the northern one, currently in this general vicinity, traveling more or less parallel to 119 here. And there's the debris tracker still prominently visible with this. And that's moving on northeastward here, as you can see, um, moving up in this general fashion toward the northeast and uh, at about 35 miles per hour. So that has sustained that debris tracker now for some time. Uh, sometimes these things are only there for one sweep of the radar. When you see it as long as five or 10 minutes, that's pretty significant. And that's moving northeastward. As you can see, it's very close to Greystone Way, moving very rapidly uh, through uh, in the area away from Hugh Daniel Drive at the current time. We continue that tornado warning for Jefferson Shelby St. Clair. Tornado, confirmed tornado now located over Greystone or seven miles south of Leeds moving northeast at 45 miles per hour, so it has sped up just a bit. Went through Highland Lakes, now going through Greystone in that part of Shelby County, and a uh, confirmed tornado with the debris tracker signature showing up with the radar and obviously showing up uh, in that part of North Shelby County. Here's the general vicinity of where it is, now over Greystone moving northeastward. It's moving at 45 miles per hour. We'll soon be crossing County Road 20, or Alabama Highway 25 here, fairly shortly here as it continues to move northeastward in a very populated area. And down south, we have the other warning associated with the storm near Calera that's moving northeast as well. And this one moving toward Columbiana and surrounding areas of South Shelby County. Uh, but this storm certainly impactful as well, located um, not too far from the National Weather Service radar site, frankly, uh, a little bit too close for comfort in terms of viewing some of the parameters, but in this general vicinity in through here, and that's also moving northeast, that would appear to be moving in the general direction of Columbiana or maybe a little bit north of Columbiana uh, with the storm moving up from the southwest. All right, let's see, uh, just said this, very close call at the office at the National Weather Service in Calera. So apparently that tornado, very close. We have this too, the tornado has crossed Hugh Daniel Drive and continues moving north northeast. So it made it through Highland Lakes, made it through Greystone, was crossing Hugh Daniel Drive and continued to move north northeastward at speeds of about 45 miles per hour. And it came very close to the um, National Weather Service office in Calera. Very was in capital letters indicating how close it was. So two tornado warnings in effect for these two storms one over South Shelby County, one further north in Shelby County that's moving toward the extreme southeastern Jefferson County, but especially um, St. Clair County, located here in the extreme northeastern corner now of Shelby County, having moved northeast of, um, of Chelsea. And we still find the debris tracker indicating right here, just south of 119, just east of Lake Purdy. Still, all these different colors are indicating that there's debris picked up, being lofted up, gets to a certain point and then it falls back down again and it comes down and that indicates that we have different things falling from the sky, not just raindrops. And that's what's happening over North Shelby County now. And we've had that debris tracker for, I would say, 10 minutes or so. That's pretty long. That's pretty significant. Um, 
but it's tracking northeastward at about uh, 45 miles per hour, and that trend will continue. If you're in the path of this storm, again, think about your safe place, think about what you're seeing on the radar, and then think about getting yourself to a low floor, small room on that floor where the walls are closer together, and if you have anything like a football helmet or a bicycle helmet, put that on your head. That helps a great deal protect you from any kind of head injury. Here's the storm here. It is pretty much parallel to 119. The reason Stephanie is drawing this further northeast is that she's matching it with the live radar from our radar, indicating it's already passed up into this part of the area. That's the three-minute advantage, and showing up here now in the area around... Um, uh, let's say getting close to Highway 491, Alabama 25, very close to that, and moving on northeastward here, just south of uh, Jefferson County and moving through um, extreme northern Shelby County as it continues on northeastward. An impressive storm for sure. Um, no damage reports yet. We continue to check that out. We're not getting any damage reports so far from the storm. But there it looked uh, just a couple of minutes ago on the debris tracker. Impressive storm here moving through Highland Lakes and Greystone and continuing northeast of there, uh, and that trend will continue. Tracking just south of Jefferson County, affecting North Shelby County, and eventually affecting uh, St. Clair County, too, as it continues on northeastward. Two active warnings, both in Shelby County, one over southern Shelby County, the other one over North Shelby County, and they're both advancing off to the northeast. Here's the southern one. Here's the northern one here. This one moving through the southern part of Shelby County, the other one further north, obviously, up into the area around um, northeastern Shelby County. Here's Columbiana. This storm will eventually be tracking there, and the one up north eventually tracking into St. Clair County as it continues to press from southwest to northeast, and that trend will certainly continue. At this point, and we know it's going through a very populated area, at this point, we don't have any damage reports to give you, nothing direct, um, and we know there's a lot of people who live in this vicinity, but nothing so far has come in. It is the middle of the night or early morning, I should say, and so in that respect, it's not too surprising. It passed very close to the National Weather Service office in Calera, has now gone on to the northeast here, and um, just on the east side of 65 and Highway 31 and continuing to track in that general fashion toward Columbiana. And the northern storm now is getting very close to being in St. Clair County here as it continues on. The Doppler couple is much harder to find at the current time. The Bree Tracker, it looks like it actually made it uh, almost up into um, extreme southern Jefferson County at some point here along um, that area just... Um, that is a new That's a new Bree Tracker here. That is a... Uh, that's a new debris tracker image now. It looked like it was new, and it looks like it's a little bit further north to me. It looks like yes. it's now right on the Shelby uh, Jefferson County line. And like you mentioned, just kind of paralleling and, and hugging 119. Pretty much paralleling 119, obviously. It's also very broad. You know, it's unusual to see it that broad. Um, but um, that's uh, indicating that things are being lofted into the air by the tornado and then being dropped back down. And uh, right now, they've just now gotten in. No new reports in from this storm in terms of any kind of damage from anybody there. And we know that a lot of people live here. This is not out over the countryside. It is a very populated area. Many, many homes, many people living here. Um, so you would think at some point there'd be reports coming in from this. But that's very prominent debris signature, no question about that. And um, nothing new in terms of reports with that one. That's the northern one, uh, right pretty much paralleling 119. The southern one further south went very close to the National Weather Service office in Calera near the Shelby County Airport, uh, near the turnoff for Montevallo for you folks going southward. And um, then from there is now moving in the general direction of Columbiana. So very active weather in Shelby County over the past few minutes. And um, we will see where this leads us. But two active tornado warnings for Shelby County that continue to be in effect. And um, it looks like... Um, this will continue for a while. Another look at the uh, debris tracker here showing up very close to 119 in the area just north of Shelby County and over the extreme southeastern parts of Jefferson County, tracking along pretty much 119 as it does. And um, that's still around, and that's been around for a while now. Jerry, when you think about some of the communities, when, this, when we first got this signature here, Kind of right along highway 119 and now have tracked it some of the communities that it's impacted there along that highway 119 and kind of close to 41 brook highland yep. graystone yep. and now we're heading up toward uh, now we're in leeds now and there are a lot of uh, communities right along 
um, right along that uh, Ziegler Road and Highway 119 heading into Leeds, a very highly populated area with a lot of neighborhoods and communities. Yep. I've done some cycling back here and there's just, it's very highly populated. We don't have any reports of damage coming in just yet, but I would imagine it wouldn't be too terribly long uh, with a, a debris tracker signature that is that strong and has been that consistent for at least three scans of the radar. Yeah, it has been around for quite some time now. You're, you're exactly right. And um, it is in an area where there's a lot of people living, no question about that. And uh, obviously it's occurring when a lot of people are sleeping. Uh, that's no question about that either. Uh, but nonetheless, you're exactly right. You would think reports would start coming in at some point anyway, when you have that kind of a consistent uh, debris signature when it's been around for, like you said, at least three sweeps of the radar, if not longer than that, then that's a pretty good sign that this thing has been on the ground for at least part of that time and has been lofting debris into the air. And again, we don't know what kind of debris it is. I mean, even in neighborhoods, it can be primarily tree debris, depending where it, exactly it's tracking. But nonetheless, it's a serious indication that a tornado has touched down and is lofting debris into the air. The southern one now, located uh, on the east side of 65 and 31, moving in this general fashion toward Columbiana and surrounding areas. This, of course, is the National Weather Service radar. That's located at the Shelby County Airport, Exeter, just off of there. Here's, uh, we're so close to the radar, you're getting that kind of an image here. Um, but as we go off to the northeast here, it looks like the um, um, storm, it, it's still indication of a, a shifting winds with the storm and it moving off toward the northeast and moving at about 45 miles per hour and pretty fast uh, as it heads off toward the northeast. This is a general area here, Columbiana, very close to the storm. Maybe it's just northwest of you and moving off toward uh, Chelsea. Oddly enough, the other storm track started near Chelsea and now this one's tracking right about over Chelsea or at least it will here in a short period of time. Not moving at quite 63 miles per hour, that would be unusually fast, but nonetheless we'll be coming close to Chelsea um, Harpersville, Vincent, Moody, Pell City, Odenville, and Branchville. And again, too, this is another area where there's a lot of people living, highly populated area, so you would think you would get reports from a storm in that area. Moving up like so, this one will come pretty close to Chelsea, may stay south of there, and then crossing uh, 280 eventually and 231 here as it heads off toward the northeast. There's Alabama 25, and it's uh, pretty much paralleling 25-2 and heading off in, in that general fashion. So two active storms, two active tornado warnings now, still in effect, one southern Shelby County, the other one now kind of on the border of uh, Jefferson, St. Clair, and Shelby counties, and both headed northeastward. And um, that's this storm in through here. Heavy rains with that as well, heavy rain extending up into Trustville. The actual warned area includes uh, this part of um, Shelby County. It includes part of St. Clair County up to about Odenville and it includes extreme southeastern Jefferson County. It does not include the city of Birmingham. It is well south of there, but uh, still moving northeast of there. That's where the storm is. There's where your debris tracker is. And I would guess this would be, this looks fairly similar to the last time, um, but it's getting close to Leeds. It's not too far southwest of Leeds now. That would be the next big community it may affect. And it's still basically paralleling 119 as it continues on northeastward and um, Quite impressive. We've seen this for quite some time. Uh, here's the deal. We have received no reports either, uh, either as of yet and have not received any dispatches. Our fire stations on 280 in the Narrows and in Mount Laurel are also reporting no issues thus far, but they were in their safe places up until a few minutes ago. So what we're seeing on the radar so far is not jiving that closely with the reports we're getting in. Obviously, we'll see how this all works out. Hopefully, the lack of reports is a good thing. But like the uh, gentleman said when he sent that report in, he, um, they have been in their safe places up until a couple of minutes ago, so they may not in a position to have seen anything. So we're still waiting to see on that. And um, it may be a little while yet before we hear anything on that. In the meantime, still an active tornado warning, now in effect for extreme northeastern or north central Shelby County, southwestern St. Clair County, and also the... Um, uh, area around, um, so that's, a new that's image. right over Leeds now. Yeah, that's a new image. That, that certainly is a new image. There's Cahaba Avenue. So we're still getting that debris tracker. Now it's over Leeds. It started near Chelsea. It kept moving northeast over Highland Lakes. It kept moving northeast over Greystone. Now it's over Leeds and you're still seeing the debris signature on this thing. And, uh, this warning in effect till 4:45 AM, it is tracking through Leeds at the current time. And, um, 
At this point, still no reports of this thing, but it sure looks like there's debris being lifted into the air. Doesn't prove what kind of debris it is. It may be harmless, that's possible, but um, it's been consistently showing this. It's moved through some very populated areas, and you would think at some point it's uh, creating some damage, it's creating some trouble for people, but no reports of that so far. So this is the northern one. Here's the, um, here's the Leeds area. That's where the storm is, and it's now moving northeastward here, so it's probably getting close to Moody at the current time and continuing northeastward. That's the warning in effect with the storm, okay, and so they, they canceled, canceled that tornado. The they, they canceled yeah. the north one, right? They canceled the. And well, what we're seeing too, you know, Steph, this is a real indication of how important live data is. Um, that debris tracker that we're showing, which is probably three minutes behind, four right. minutes behind, something like that, but in that short a period of time. Obviously, that thing disappeared, or they would not have canceled that warning. And the velocity data really weakened right. too. I mean, they're just uh, over the last few scans, the the couplet was just not, you know, not quite as strong. So, uh, so that warning again is no longer in effect. But we still have the southern warning, Jerry, uh, down to the uh, the south. And so we'll go down there and let you track that one. All right, we're talking about that one now. And by the way, one thing when this warning was issued and included a chunk of Jefferson County, historically we would have heard the sirens go off here but they now have a new system in place. We did not hear the sirens because of the new system, much more directional, and they're much more tied into the storm um, uh, warnings as opposed to the county-based warnings, and that was a real change from previous years. Okay, we're looking at the southern storm now. Started off here near Calera, near the Shelby County Airport exit, now moving northeastward, so impacting areas around Columbiana, perhaps, up to around Wilsonville. We're seeing lightning and thunder with this storm, too. Here's County Road 25, Columbiana, the storm moving northeastward here, about 45 miles per hour. Here are the Doppler winds, and again, we're very close to the radar site, and that can make it a little bit difficult to read this out. Hard at this point to pick out a real major signature with this. Um, they continue the tornado warning for that part of Shelby County until 5 a.m. At 4.30, one minute ago, the storm uh, capable of producing a tornado located near Columbiana, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. So in this general vicinity, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour, uh, near Argo Road at the current time. Here's the general area where we're seeing the circulation or the um, tornado, um, Old Highway 25 West, as you can see. Also, the Austin Farm Road as well, getting some of that rain. This is all tracking northeastward here from Columbiana northeastward. Here's the northeast edge of it, so it goes up to the area just southwest of 280 again. We keep mentioning the same places over and over again. Um, near Harpersville, about 502. Wilsonville, 449, or about 17 minutes from now. Um, Alpine, about 520 or so, as it continues to track northeastward through this general part of Shelby County, basically starting off at Columbiana and continuing northeast of there, crossing County Road 25 and moving northeast of there. This storm uh, could also cause three-quarter inch hail. Um, current motion on this is estimated at 35 miles per hour. This is the one active warning we have at the current time. There's Wilsonville you saw off to the east. Edwards Lane getting some of the heavy rain, Highway 5 as well. Blacksmith Lane, too, getting some of that heavy rain, and Joel Lane, too. Summit Lane, the rain coming down pretty hard. It's not as intense as it is in some other places, but nonetheless, that's associated with the storm causing the tornado. This is moving northeast again, about 35 miles per hour, so a little bit slower than some of the other ones have been moving over the course of the past uh, hour or so that we've been tracking. There's a broader view of it. Here's your warning area located over northeastern Shelby County. Uh, the storm this time tracking started near here and is now moving northeastward now. So Wilsonville in line for this perhaps, somewhere near Wilsonville, maybe a little bit north of it. And uh, again, ahead of this storm, you want to be in your safe place, the lowest floor possible. Small room on that floor. If you can, put as many walls between you and the outside walls as you can. And if you have head protection, such as a bicycle helmet or football helmet, by all means, put it on. It could go a long way toward protecting your head in any kind of a tornado or tornado or a high wind situation. So there you have it. There are the Doppler winds. And again, we're very close to the radar site, so I don't think we want to stare at that too long. But um, there's the overall view of things around Columbiana and surrounding areas. The storm moving northeastward here, 35 miles per hour. And um, we're still waiting for the, the latest on this near Columbiana, rain falling on Highway 25. It is also raining on Bolton Lane and raining pretty hard. That's where the storm is over the southeastern part of Shelby County, moving northeast. If it holds together, uh, it might eventually get up into the area around Vincent and uh, along Highway 231 there 
in that part of Shelby County as it moves on northeastward. Uh, some of the communities in the path of this storm include Childersburg at 503, uh, Talladega 531, Alpine 516 from the storm here, having started near Calera, now moving northeast and will eventually cross over US 231 and 280 as it moves on toward the northeast as well with some heavy rains with this. Uh, the rain does diminish somewhat to the west of that. And fortunately, you know, we were concerned about the flooding situation in Hoover and surrounding areas. There is another batch of uh, pretty good rains coming in, but we got this one out of the way. And that's the important thing. That was going to be the persistent one. And at least we're seeing some movement with it now. And that's a good sign, too, as we head off toward the uh, northeast and east with these storms headed northeastward. All right, we're going to um, take a look at the uh, WVTM 13 live Doppler, and, and we're back on... Uh, the National Weather Service radar in Calera. You can see here some of that rain coming in from the west, Tuscaloosa along the Jefferson Walker County line. That's going to move in too. Here's the leading edge of this, and kind of more broken up now than it was a short time ago, not looking like an organized line now, looking more like a line that has some segments. Um, Shelby, Bibb, Jefferson, Perry, and Blunt County are due to fall off the watch by 5 a.m. It might be a close call for Shelby but the others should be good to go at 5 a.m., so several more counties will be dropped at 5 a.m. And they've from, canceled that warning as well. And they canceled that warning as well. They canceled that warning too, which is more important information uh, than the other st stuff too. Um, yeah, I haven't seen that on chat yet, but sure enough, it's not showing up there anymore, is it? So it is canceled. And overall, Stephanie, would you say, I think there's less organization to this whole thing. Yeah, it does. It looks like now it's starting to slow down a little bit, too, just by the sheer um, motion of the storms. They're not moving quite as, as quickly as, as they were when we were tracking them in the western counties. They have slowed down, but it also looks like we're starting to get at least into an environment that may be not as unstable uh, as what we had kind of west of I-65. Now, that being said, there's still plenty of shear out there. And like you mentioned earlier, Jerry, with this much shear around, all it takes is just a very small pocket of instability for one of those storms to start to rotate and potentially produce a tornado. So as long as we have this highly uh, sheared environment here in East Alabama, then um, we still have to kind of keep our guards up uh, and, and we're not going anywhere. We're still going to track the leading edge of this line for our friends here in the east, including Talladega and Sylacauga and Anniston and Gadsden. And obviously we'll be here with you until we get that line out of the, uh, the area. But currently as of right now, uh, it looks like there are no active warnings in effect, and so that last tornado warning has been canceled a little bit early. It looks like the um, uh, the radar products or the indication that that storm was was rotating that has uh, has weakened, and so that uh, that warning has been canceled now. Um, rain still coming down very heavily, and it looks like it's starting to pick up now again in some of our western counties. If we put up the uh, the actual watch, the tornado watch, the National Weather Service, as busy as they are uh, tracking these warnings, has also continued to uh, re remove some of the counties from the actual tornado watch, too. And so a lot of our western counties have been removed from that now. Um, it looks like... Um, at straight up 5 o'clock is when they're going to remove some of the counties along the I-65 corridor, Jerry. And that's good news, Stephanie. Obviously, um, when we get rid of this, we get rid of the threat of severe weather. Earlier tonight, we tracked one supercell thunderstorm that moved through Tuscaloosa County, including the Hagler community. John papke has been traveling around Tuscaloosa County this evening. I believe he's in Hagler now. And, John, I think you have found some damage there. Is that true? Yeah, you're right, Jerry. We arrived here about 30 minutes ago, and from what I've been told by the calling police officers that are here on the scene, this is the worst damage that you'll find in the community at this point. Now, this is uh, Hagler Coaling Road. It's just north of Highway 82 in this part of Tuscaloosa County. I'm going to step out of the shot and give you a closer look at the damage. Uh, I've been told as many as 10 trees were knocked down by the storm that blew through here, I'd say about an hour and a half ago now, and uh, you can see the power pole is leaning over towards the road. There's a tree that's also, you know, just based basically hanging on against the power line there and there's a number of homes along this stretch of the road that are without power. There's one home that has a little bit of roof damage on the rear of the home but fortunately no one was injured in that incident and from what I understand based on my conversations with folks here uh, with the police department and also back with the Tuscaloosa EMA this is the extent of the damage produced by that uh, I guess alleged tornado or confirmed tornado that blew through here about an hour and a half or, or so. Now I also talked to the EMA just a minute ago.
ago, she said the director told me that they are um, deactivating. They're shutting down the emergency operations center that has been open since last night. So that is a sign that things have uh, pretty much moved out of the area and there is no longer a severe weather threat, at least here in Tuscaloosa County. For now, we're live in uh, Hagler. John Papke, WVTM 13. So, John, from what I understand, from what you've been told, probably you're looking at the worst damage they experienced there. Yeah, I was told there's a number of other trees that did fall that blocked the roads. In fact, we passed a few that had already been cut up that were not, they're no longer blocking the path for us to get here. Um, from I've been, you know, this is basically the, the, the biggest damage you're going to see that's the most evident at this time of day. Now, there may be some trees that are down on properties that you can't see because it's dark, but the most evident damage that we could find is what you're seeing behind me here, Jerry. All right, thank you, John. Be safe, be careful traveling about. I know in the dark sometimes with debris on the road, that's always a dicey proposition. So thank you for your report tonight, and uh, we're glad to hear it's not worse than that in the Hagler community that was hit earlier. Trees and power lines down near the Hagler Volunteer Fire Department right, and started. some possible structural damage too. Okay, the original line has broken up a bit more, frankly, over the last 10 minutes or so, uh, but we still have another batch of rain coming in from the west. Doesn't look like that's going to be a severe batch, but it's gonna make it rain some more and uh, some more lightning and thunder as well. In Shelby County, quite a difference from what it was even 10, 15 minutes ago when we had the two separate tornado warnings, one over North Shelby, the other one over South Shelby County. Um, we're hearing basically for some reports coming in from parts of Shelby County that uh, there isn't, we don't think there's too much in the way of damage, but we're waiting to hear those reports come in more. Certainly a very populated area, and uh, if there were any significant damage to be reported, we would hear about that very soon, even though it is still dark, obviously, outside. Here is Shelby County now. Between Chelsea and Columbiana, cloud to ground lightning occurring, some heavy downpours too, still nasty outside as can be. This is moving eastward and northeastward through the rest of Shelby County, eventually into Talladega County and St. Clair County. Heavy downpours with this along with the cloud to ground lightning. West of 65, it does diminish somewhat, but still some rain falling here in much of southeastern Jefferson, Jefferson County, and that's heading eastward as well. So this nasty stuff will continue for a while. And what's more, with more rain back to the west, it's going to keep on happening off and on, I think, for the next few hours, anyway, that we get some downpours and some lightning and thunder, too. Once you're west of, let's say, northwest Tuscaloosa County, then you're done. I mean, then everything's fine and everything is quiet. Here's a look at our radar site in Vance. Here's some of the heavy rain on either side of that. So some of that stuff has to come through yet, and that means we're not done with the nasty weather. It's still going to cross the area over the course of the next um, couple of hours. It sure looks like, in terms of church services, because there was a lot of concern about that, it being Palm Sunday, uh, that that could be a factor. It, it does look like from Birmingham on west, I think everything will be okay. Most of those services don't occur until at least 8.30 or 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Um, to, further to the east, you might still possibly be dealing with a threat of some severe weather over our far eastern counties, but I think over much of the area, certainly from Birmingham on west, that should be winding down or be over with. In fact, at 5 o'clock, the um, uh, Jefferson County's uh, tornado watch is supposed to be canceled, and I believe that will happen on time. You see some of the storm reports from earlier. That was the report that we got from John here a short time ago of the tornado touching down in Hagler. Obviously, it did touch down. Obviously, when the... Um, we were showing that debris signature, what it was picking up was mostly probably trees and parts of trees, whether they be branches or leaves or whatever. Uh, the more serious situation back here in Monroe County, uh, Mississippi, where there was at least two fatalities and some people were reported missing, more damage done back there, uh, especially in the town of uh, Hamilton, um, reporting multiple homes damage and multiple injuries, and uh, at least two people uh, also killed back there. There were also two children killed back in Texas early Saturday morning. Tragic situation, an eight-year-old and a three-year-old. They were in the back seat of a car and debris fell on it and it unfortunately killed them. The two people in the front seat were, were not killed by that storm, but obviously um, just a tragic situation there in that part of Texas. Okay, Highland Lakes, trees down in Highland Lakes associated with the TDS coming out of Birmingham. So 4.09 a.m., Trees reported down in the Highland Lakes community, um, and that's associated with the uh, tornado debris signature that was reported from the uh, National Weather Service radar at the Shelby County Airport. That occurred at 4.09, and that was from that tornado warning that we were uh, dealing with there about 30 minutes ago or so. Also, trees down on Highway 18 in Walker County, Corona, 
this is near Patton. That was assumed to be not associated, though, with tornadic winds or with severe weather winds, but rather just gradient winds. We're going to have that during today's Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday is going to be a very breezy day, some gusty winds at times that may be on the order of 30, 35 miles per hour in gusts. Won't be associated with severe weather, but it will still make it windy outside. So that could be a factor, too, coming in behind this whole system. And, Jerry, we're also just, uh, we've got uh, a message into the uh, station from Stephanie Bright that there are some trees down on um, Teton Road and Blueberry Lane. That would be in the Rocky Ridge community, kind of right on the Hoover and Vestavia line there, too. So um, we had um, um, severe weather obviously come through not too, too long ago. I'm not sure, I don't think that community was ever under a warning, so it could have just been some gradient winds along with the, uh, the heavy rain that rolled through, but it sounds like we've got um, trees down kind of even outside of those areas that were warned. Jerry? It sounds that way, at least in a few cases too. And with some additional water in the ground now and with some of the wind gusts later today probably going to be on the order of 30 miles per hour or more, I wouldn't be surprised if some weak trees uh, might fall down even additionally to what we've already had because it will be windy and the ground's now pretty much saturated with all the rain that fell tonight, basically. Here's the rain rate, still quite impressive here as you look to the east. This is, now it is further east than it was before, but 4.55 inches of rain in parts of North Shelby County, east of Lake Purdy, 2.35 inches along 119, and still some pretty heavy totals too. Then it breaks for a while, then you pick up this batch coming in from the west, and that's going to sweep through here over the next um, couple of hours. And as it does, um, we'll see some of this rain head from west to east across the area as well. You see some of those downpours, 3.95 inches, 2 and a quarter inches. And what this is, this is a rain rate. It doesn't mean it'll last a full hour. It does mean that if it, if it, did, last, it uh, did last for an hour, you would get this much rainfall based on the intensity of the rain at the current time. It is nice to see the western part of the area without any rain falling now, but we still have some very heavy downpours in parts of uh, St. Clair County. Springville about 3.7 inches, 2.75 inches down toward Moody in along highway or along Interstate 20 here. Odenville getting some pretty heavy rains too. So that's all shifting eastward and uh, still impacting many areas. Then another batch comes through there that's now over eastern sections of Walker County, and that's getting pretty close to the city of Birmingham again. So we've seen the rain break up. It's going to come back in again and then finally sweep through. And there might be some additional cloud to ground lightning with this as well. I've noticed some of that showing up back to the west too. Um, uh, let's see, uh, trees down, that's the same uh, report we had before. Okay, so here's some of that rain. Um, you're looking at the area around 459 and uh, Interstate 20 here. Uh, some of that rain coming down hard at the current time, as you can see, in the uh, southwestern part of uh, Jefferson County and also uh, some of that cloud to ground lightning too. Not as much rain, and you know, when it's all said and done, places like uh, parts of Etowah County and Calhoun County may never wind up with as much rain as areas further south and west had, uh, just based on how things are shaping out and playing out with this. Um, but here comes this next batch of rain, so I think after that break we've had in the city of Birmingham, it's going to start raining again fairly hard, probably within the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so when this last batch comes through and uh, makes it rain pretty hard again. Okay, moving northeast at 60 miles per hour is this particular storm now down in here. That's moving northeastward. That will be uh, passing, it uh, looks like, through um, the area around Calera and Columbia and Chelsea again. And I know we keep using the term Chelsea, that we keep naming that area. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect, but it's for Lowndes County. That's till 5.30 a.m. That's obviously well south, south of um, central Alabama, located closer to, um, to the Montgomery area. So there's this mess on the WVTM 13 live Doppler here as we approach uh, uh, about 10 minutes of 5 here on this Palm Sunday morning in Birmingham, Alabama. We still have more rain coming up in the southwest. Uh, the ones that were causing most of the severe weather has now passed over here in Shelby County. With as much wind shear as there is, we always have to be cautious that, you know, one of these storms could spin up, and that's a possibility, but um, uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. At this point in the area along 280 east of she uh, Chelsea, still some downpours here, some cloud to ground lightning too, maybe not as intense as it once was, but it's still there and that's still moving on toward the east as well uh, with this particular storm um, moving through the area of uh, that part of Shelby County. All right, there's a close-up view of the Birmingham 
area. Avondale getting some rain, 6th Avenue South, 7th Avenue North, Regents Field, and then it gets heavier back to the west as we go to the west. Here is Tuscaloosa County and specifically the city of Tuscaloosa, Campus Drive, Hackberry Lane, Bryant-Denny Stadium getting some of that rain too. The heaviest has shifted a little bit northeast of there and now located over eastern sections of Tuscaloosa County, Coaling, Vance, and surrounding areas, uh, Green Pond and Woodstock, still getting some of these downpours in through here. Spring Branch Road, getting some of that rain. Chestnut Lane as well. Ch Jennings Road too, and the Mercedes plant getting some more rain after the near miss with the um, uh, tornado that came through earlier. Uh, Lucille Drive too, getting some of that rain. So it's still coming down hard in this area. Dixie Drive as well, uh, getting some of the heavy downpours here associated with the another band of rain coming in with this particular system as it moves on toward the east. Uh, at least we've gone now, what, maybe 10 minutes without a warning being in effect, Stephanie? I guess that's a good sign. There's Tuscaloosa County, still some rain falling there as you're looking live uh, at the city and northeast of the city and still kind of wet there too. We have some more coming up for you now. We'll continue to follow this along. As you can see, some of this rain showing up in uh, parts of uh, the area of eastern Tuscaloosa County. You're looking at the WVTN 13 Live Doppler. Pockets of heavy rain in through here. Brookwood Parkway, Chestnut Lane, Will Walker Road, Lucille Drive, all getting some of that rain. It is advancing on toward the east on I-20. It will eventually get to the point of our advance and then points east of there. There you can see a close-up view of Shelby County. Here's some of the cloud to ground lightning along 280 and points southward around Columbiana down to Calera too. This is all passing off toward the east. This heaviest rain will be diminishing here temporarily, but it's not the last of it because after that another batch comes in from the west that's a little bit heavier again. So even though this will temporarily go away, I think it'll pick up again as time goes on and come through again and perhaps come through. We do re have this report in. National Weather Service personnel report tree uh, down blocking the road on County Road 16 near the quarry. Calera Police Department is on the scene now. The um, tornado watch has been canceled for Bibb, Blood, Jefferson, and Perry counties continues on Shelby County till 6 a.m. So it is now out in Jefferson, as you can see, uh, Blunt County as well, Bibb County too, Perry County. So we're limited now to these extreme eastern counties. Coleman County is under the jurisdiction of the Huntsville office, so they may decide that based on different criteria, but at this point that watch still in effect there. Um, the eastern part of the watch in effect till 9 a.m. It's getting very complicated now. <laughs> Shelby County in effect till 6 a.m. technically. Uh, and obviously Blunt, Jefferson, Bibb County is currently now out of the watch completely. Stephanie Walker. Hey, Jerry. So that is some good news. Now we're starting to see that threat ending. Now, I do want to reiterate, though, we do still have some very heavy rain and even a little bit of thunder and lightning just west of downtown Birmingham. Uh, that's going to be kind of moving in here and approaching the uh, the Hoover uh, already uh, on top of Bessemer. So once it starts to move inside the 459 corridor, it is going to pour down rain again. There'll be at least a little bit of thunder and lightning with this, but this is non severe. Uh, there'll likely be some gusty winds too, as it's now starting to approach um, kind of the, um, the Rossbridge area, the Highway 150 area. Um, trace crossings. Eventually that heavier band's going to get to you folks. There's just not a lot of, of, there's a little bit of thunder and lightning, but nothing like what we had before. And eventually that will get to the Highway 31 and the, and the uh, I-65 area. But again, these are uh, non-severe thunderstorms uh, at this point, and it looks like they should stay below severe limits. Uh, even back into Tuscaloosa County, too, very heavy rain now right around our radar site there in Vance. And so uh, kind of Vance and Coaling, those areas that were affected by that confirmed tornado earlier, looks like we're seeing some very heavy rain now starting to move into uh, those locations with some pretty high rainfall rates. And as Jerry mentioned, now that, that we've had a tremendous amount of rain, the ground's a little bit softer now, and the wind is still expected to stay pretty high uh, through the day today. Day, it may not take much for uh, for some small trees to come down or or to what uh, to fall over. So we may continue to see some uh, tree and power line issue, uh, even with some of these non-severe thunderstorm 
winds. We widen out the view again, and uh, you'll notice down to the, uh, the east, we've been looking over into parts of Shelby County. This is kind of what's left of the leading edge of this. It is non-severe. Uh, it's it's uh, raining very hard. There are some gusty winds now approaching Vincent there into Shelby County. You can see a tremendous amount of thunder and lightning on top of Columbiana, heading toward Vincent there into Shelby County, eventually heading over toward Logan Martin Lake. It's raining there now, uh, but lightly, Pell City, Logan Martin Lake, kind of down near Cropwell, Talladega, um, Alpine, those areas, you will eventually start to see kind of this leading edge moving into your area within the, the next hour or so. And so the weather will start to go downhill. You'll likely hear some thunder and lightning and some very gusty winds too. But once you head inside the, the 459 corridor, kind of uh, very close to um, really inside McCalla and Bessemer, and now heading over toward, the, again, Highway 150 and that general west side of Hoover. The, uh, the weather is about to go downhill again with a little bit of thunder and lightning and some very heavy rain too. As we plot rainfall rates on top of this, uh, you can see three and a half, almost three and a half inches per hour. Now it's not gonna stay in one spot for an entire hour, so we probably won't get three inches. Maybe we get uh, an inch or two, but the bottom line is this is the type of rain that comes down so hard. It's very, very difficult to, uh, to drive in. And we're starting to get to the point in the morning now. It's almost 5 o'clock. It's 4.54 to where people are going to be getting out on the roads. Uh, it's Sunday morning, so clearly there's less traffic than normal this early on. Um, but certainly not going to be fun if you have to uh, have to drive in, in rainfall rates that are actually that heavy. Again, we widen out the, uh, the view again on WBTM 13 Live Doppler, and this has been such an important tool this morning in tracking these uh, supercells this morning and some of these severe storms. The good news is right now, Jerry, we are warning free, at least in central Alabama, and uh, we continue to see a lot of these counties being cleared from the watch too. So at least we're moving in the right direction, Steph, even though uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, you can see the back edge of the rain roughly over the city of Tuscaloosa and points southward here into Perry County. That's advancing eastward, too. So the lull in the rain that has occurred in the Magic City and surrounding areas is short-lived, and the rain's going to come back in again, and it'll rain pretty hard, and there'll be some lightning and thunder, too. It does look like, though, the main severe threat is associated with this band and points east of there, not so much to the west and um, that trend should continue. So this particular band of thunderstorms here moving eastward near Pell City at 514, Alpine about 525, Talladega 538, Sylacauga 548, and continuing to press east of there in Sylacauga, for example, where you haven't had much in a way of anything so far with this. You're gonna get another, you're gonna get a shot of rain coming in. It's gonna be pretty heavy. Some cloud to ground lightning too, some brief hard downpours, and um, then it will let up a little bit, but then I think the second batch will come in from western Shelby County here and be pretty heavy as well. So that's the basic deal for um, uh, that part of uh, Talladega County and the Shelby County stuff still raining hard over the eastern part of the county. Lots of cloud to ground li lightning that will continue for a while longer. Columbiana has had a stormy night and stormy morning and still is at the current time. Old Highway 25 West at the current time. North Deborah Drive, Industrial Parkway, all getting some real heavy downpours. Beacon Drive too as this batch moves through and some very heavy rainfalls with it. Lightning and thunder with it as well. That extends back to the west too. We go back into West Shelby County and the rain has let up over uh, areas of uh, West Shelby County, but that's a temporary thing. There's more rain coming in from the west and also around Bessemer raining hard along Highway 150 and surrounding areas. Also raining around Lace, uh, Lacey's Chapel at the current time coming down pretty heavily. Some downpours in through here. So this is the last gasp, so to speak. But even though it is, it's still pretty potent and it's still gonna make it rain hard and there might be a fair amount of cloud to ground lightning as well. Old Highway 150 getting some heavy downpours at the current time, as you can see. Uh, that area leading from 459 over to Ross Bridge and surrounding areas. And then it begins to let up. Once you get west of Jefferson, in much of Walker County down into Tuscaloosa County, it becomes more like a regular rain, so to speak, if you will. Not as intense. That's also moving on to, toward the uh, northeast. The whole line is shifting eastward as the rotating cells or the cells themselves move off toward the northeast, and uh, that trend basically continuing. Almost done in the city of Tuscaloosa, maybe another 15, 20 minutes of rain, something like that, and then it should be pretty much over. As for rotating storms, still some evidence of rotation up here in the northeast, but we're not seeing nearly as much of that as we were some time ago. Uh, I was looking at the National Weather Service, or I should say the Storm Prediction Center outlook for 
tomorrow. Actually, it starts at 7 a.m. and goes to 7 a.m. on uh, Monday, and it has the threat of severe weather pretty much limited to extreme east Alabama, and it has the tornado threat even further east than that, and actually develops a bit of a tornado threat up in the uh, middle Atlantic states and up into Pennsylvania um, during the day on Sunday, so at least it's shifting away from us, and uh, better news for the Deep South certainly with that. All right, still some lightning and thunder, too. Oh, here it is right there. Look at that. That's amazing. Thank you, Stephanie. In any event, marginal risk here to cover Etowah, Calhoun County, Talladega County, Clay County. Points east of there under a slight risk. That includes the city of Atlanta. But as you can see, no risk at all for much of the area. So that's a huge improvement over the way it was uh, during the day on Sunday. And, in fact, it's actually a huge or dur – during the day it was on Saturday. And it's actually a big improvement over the original forecast for – today, which had the more of a, a risk holding on to our eastern counties and is currently being forecast. You can see the difference. Uh, temperatures are beginning to come down after it was in the mid-70s, up through midnight and beyond in Birmingham, down to 69 now, 61 in Haleyville, 66 at Fayette. Temperatures gradually coming down, 62 at Coleman, uh, still in the 70s further east of there, 72 in Pell City, 74 in Aniston, 73 in Talladega, so that cooler air is beginning to move in. It will be somewhat cooler, not colder by any means, but it will be somewhat cooler today, and then it looks like it gets a little bit chillier as we get up into um, Sunday night and Monday. But Monday looks like a pretty nice day. In fact, the start of the work week should be pretty nice, Monday and Tuesday, both days featuring sunshine. Temperature's not bad, and uh, just generally much better weather than what we're having right now and what is still moving through the area at this point. Tuscaloosa, the rain's still falling. But the back edge is very close to you, and this time, once it gets through, that will be it, and you should be in much better shape during the day. You folks in Fayette, Marion, Lamar County, Pickens County, you are completely done. No more rain expected for you. In the city of Birmingham, where as it has diminished, it's about to come in again and raining pretty hard along 269, McDonald Chapel and surrounding areas, getting some of that heavier rain, and that's about to pass back over downtown Birmingham and surrounding areas. So some of this heavy rain around 4th Avenue West, 7th Street West will shift on eastward, crossing over 65 and getting to downtown Birmingham here shortly. And that will cause the rain to pick up again in intensity as we go through, let's say, the next, um, next 30 minutes or so. And finally, after that, I think it will finally diminish and start lessening. There's a look over the Magic City from a position here atop Red Mountain. Still looks pretty wet outside. And it's about to get heavier than this, the rain is, so those visibilities will go down once again as the next batch comes in. And then beyond that point, once we get through with another hour, I think we'll finally be winding it down as it ends from west to east across the area. But right now, we're still tracking some of that rain. Rainfall totals like this, the heaviest ones in the 3 to 4 inch range, including this swath near um, Columbus, Mississippi, that was associated with that one supercell thunderstorm and then back down into Hale County, too. The average amounts over most of the area, about one to two inches, less than that up over the northeast, obviously. We're not quite done with these totals yet. There'll be a bit more added on, but it shouldn't be a whole lot more. I think average amounts, probably when it's all said and done, will be between one and a half and two and a half inches of rain, with a few spots getting a bit more than that, maybe up to about three inches or so. Right now, just after 5 a.m. on this Palm Sunday morning, we're going over to meteorologist Harmony Mendoza. Hey, Jerry, you've been talking a lot about what's been happening with these storms, and we want to show you some of the video that we've been getting into our newsroom. We're going to start out with where John Papke has been. This is damage. You can see trees, power lines down over some of the main roads. This is in Hagler in Tuscaloosa County. And, of course, this could be from damaging straight line winds, but this is from this morning. This is breaking weather information that we're just now getting as our crews have arrived on the scene, and they are moving around and trying to really depict the areas that are the most dangerous because it, this is not a really heavily traveled roadway at 502 in the morning but within the next couple of hours there will be folks waking up and if you are around the Hagler community keep in mind that we are talking about trees down power lines down on some of the main roads where folks would go in and out another area that we want to reiterate this is from Vicksburg Mississippi uh, this this pouring rain the storm damage from Vicksburg the Mississippi River takes a huge turn in Vicksburg, so it does not take much to see uh, the Mississippi River swollen. Trees down, you can see folks trying to uh, 
uh, chainsaw and move those trees out of the roads. Uh, some of the roads that are a little bit more traveled yesterday because this happened on Saturday in around mid morning. Uh, so damage just pretty much all over the place. This is an, another video that we have just into the newsroom. This is storm damage in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Now dozens of trees, they have uh, blocked one highway making a rescue mission almost impossible until the storm passed. Just look at all of the uh, rain just moving in sideways up against the car, almost blinding rain. Reports of several rescued from mobile homes after trees ripped through them. Only minor injuries were reported, but this is part of the same storm system that we're now starting to see weaken, but still areas right now in East Alabama are under a tornado watch. Now, Stephanie and Jerry have been mentioning that the National Weather Service has begun to lift up some of the county watches and as the storms continue to track eastward, we will hope to see some of the more of those watches eliminated from the tornado watch box, Jerry. Harmony, that certainly is what we're looking forward to, and we think that'll be happening over the course of the next few hours. We're looking at one of our model forecasts now, and we're looking ahead to, I think, later on this week, I guess. And we're looking into Thursday, and the reason Stephanie Walker has this up is that's the next threat of strong to severe storms. This is uh, 4 p.m., 7 p.m. Thursday. It does look like the timing of this one is many days away, so this could change. But at this point, it looks like the timing of this one's a bit different than what we just went through. This truly is an overnight event. This next one coming up looks like it's more of an afternoon, evening event, the more typical time for severe weather. But that is the next one. You know, we're in the busy time of the year. It's April. It's the middle of April. So we're really right smack in the middle of tornado season here, the spring season. And um, the fact that we're having these threats every three or four days is not really that uncommon. It does happen like this some years, and it's happening now. Um, we're seeing this particular event now kind of break down in the sense that there's not much organization to these storms anymore, but they're still causing some heavy rain. The rain now beginning to pick up on our rooftop here atop Red Mountain, and that's about to move across the entire Birmingham metro. Some heavy downpours with that as that approaches um, 280 and uh, just basically spreads across the entire area. The over the mountain community is getting that as well. Everybody getting some of that heavy rain. We're beginning to see the visibility diminish go down in the city of Birmingham as we look out over the city lights, obscuring some of those lights because of the heavy downpours. Uh, anyway, this is um, all shifting eastward now. So the lull in the rain ends, the rain picks back up in intensity, lasts for maybe an, 45 minutes to an hour. And then finally after that, it does finally diminish and go away. And that would be a very good sign. Two and a half inches currently is the uh, roughly two and a half to two and three quarter inches per hour is the rain rate with this coming in at the current time. It's just that it won't last at that rate for an entire hour in most places. So the actual rainfall totals probably somewhat less than that as this comes on through. As you look at Lake Purdy and that part of Shelby County, Greystone Way, Bro uh, Brook Highland Drive, that area getting wet at the current time with some heavy downpours coming through. Um, also Cahaba Beach Road, this entire area, which was just under a tornado warning, not more than about 45 minutes ago, uh, now getting another heavy downpour. So it's been a very stormy start to your Palm Sunday morning here in that part of um, Shelby County and surrounding areas. And up to the northeast we go in the area northwest of Pell City around Odenville along US 411. Uh, there we're seeing another batch of heavy rain move through. Uh, this will continue for a while here. It won't last a super long period of time. Tucker Road, 3rd Avenue, Ash Drive, uh, Pleasant Valley Road and surrounding areas getting some of that heavy rain. And that's going to continue for a while along that area. And then back to the west we go. We find Bibb County still getting some of the heavy rains on either side of Centerville, US 82. It's raining hard. Briarfield as well. If you never visited one of those Civil War reenactments, you got to do that sometime. It's amazing in Briarfield, and they do it. They do it right. They really do it um, uh, very true to what happened to those historical events in the Civil War. All right, the rain getting a bit harder again. The visibility going down over the city of Birmingham. Some of the buildings being almost obscured by the intensity of the rain. And I think I may have seen a flash of lightning off in the distance too. Montevallo getting some good hard rains as well as this comes through. Um, as we go to the west, it looks like it diminishes just a bit. Once you get west of Tuscaloosa, once you get west of Vance, it starts going down, and then there's another flash of lightning. West of the city of Tuscaloosa pretty much has um, uh, dried out at the current time, and then up in and around the city of Birmingham, still getting this last bit of rain coming through, and it's going to rain hard for a little bit period of time here. Shouldn't be too hard. 
um, with this. All right, we're getting this report in from Lake Purdy at Grant's, um, at Grant's Mile Fire Department, I think, or Grant's Mill Fire Department. Tree down on Grant's Mill Road near Lake Purdy associated with the storm that came through. Uh, Hoover Fire is out on several trees down. Inverness Center Drive, Milner Way, Hugh Daniel Block south of Greystone Farms. No structural damage or injuries reported. That's interesting because the Hugh Daniel report is certainly associated with the, um, that uh, thunderstorm that came through producing the tornado. That was certainly associated with that. So those trees that were coming down that have blocked Hugh Daniel Drive associated with that uh, tornado that came through about an hour ago and uh, causing, the, um, causing the blockage of Hugh Daniel Drive there in the Greystone area when that storm came through. We don't know about all the reports yet, and there may be other reports of damage. We hope that they're nothing worse than tree damage and that kind of thing, but um, we'll see how that trends. Tree down on Grants Mill Road near Lake Purdy associated with, when they say this, that means a TDS or tornado debris signature from the Birmingham airport um, right in through here. That was that uh, tornado report that came through earlier. And also this report in Shelby County at the American Village, tree down on Highway 16 near the quarry, also associated with a tornado debris signature from the National Weather Service in Birmingham, and that was from the other storm coming through too. So lined up there, as you can see, three different reports um, in Shelby County, one near Calera, the other two in north central Shelby County, and then a few more back to the west as well in parts of uh, Tuscaloosa County and surrounding areas. Uh, those areas also being impacted by the um, storms coming through. Tornado over Hagler, trees and power lines down near Hagler, um, the volunteer fire department, possible structural damage. We've had John Papke do a, a report on that. From what he could tell, it was mostly trees and then trees falling into um, power lines. He did find one house that had some minor roof damage. It didn't look like it was much worse than that, though, and uh, that was from that storm going through there. So at least a couple of instances, maybe three instances, of, of tornadoes touching down tonight and early this morning that did... Uh, did some damage, but so far, most of the reports coming in are fairly limited damage, mostly to trees and that kind of thing. We're getting some of that heavier rain again, more lightning showing up here. This has to swing through yet. That will happen over the next hour. And uh, once you get city of Tuscaloosa now, you can celebrate. You are finished. The rain is done there. You'll be in much better shape from this point on. Meanwhile, the areas further east still dealing with that rain coming in from the west, and it is a thorough soaking indeed. Some downpours with this, lightning and thunder too. The tornado watch remains in effect over our stream eastern counties till 9 a.m. Shelby County is in effect uh, until 6 o'clock this morning. And um, you can see how heavy the rain is as we look out over the city lights of the city of Birmingham, raining much heavier and uh, some of the lights becoming a bit obscured as that comes through. The Shelby County tornado watch expiring at 6 a.m., obviously right in through here from the uh, uh, storms moving through. They wanted to make sure they don't cancel this too early, so they made sure that was a little bit later in Shelby County. Calhoun, Etowa, Lee, Montgomery, that expires at 9 a.m., and based on what we're seeing, that seems to be appropriate and seems to make sense that it could be done by then. Um, there's your back edge showing up just east of the city of Tuscaloosa and moving east of there. Still some scattered cloud-to-ground lightning in here. Still some very intense downpours with this coming through, and that trend will continue. Um, still at times we show a little bit of um, uh, rotation with some of the uh, storms. Um, John DeBlock from the National Weather Service says, noticeable downward trend in deep convection across the northern two-thirds of the area, and that's probably the... Um, Best thing we've heard so far tonight. Uh, so a noticeable downward trend in deep convection across the northern two-thirds of the area. It's a good sign that we're moving away from the severe weather producing thunderstorms and into more ordinary thunderstorms and showers and downpours and that kind of thing. A good sign we're getting near the end of this. As I said, in, in, once you're at the city of Tuscaloosa and points west, you are done. I mean, there's no more rain to come. The only thing you'll have will be some gusty winds as we go through Palm Sunday and into Sunday evening too. Otherwise, the weather will be improving. We still have to get through the rest of this mess over the city of Birmingham. Here's a model forecast from, uh, that starts off at 11 o'clock Sunday night, and it shows some leftover clouds, but by that time, the rain is gone. Here's 4 o'clock in the morning. As we go forward in time, you'll see how that rain ends. At, this is going to be about on time. 6 a.m. shows it west of uh, ending at 65, 
by 8 a.m. pretty much ending over the eastern part of the area. So that's the direction we're moving in. I guess there could still be a leftover shower or two. I'm not seeing a whole lot of that right now, but that could possibly happen during the day. And some clouds will be lingering, and they may come back in later in the afternoon when there could be a passing shower. That would not be severe or anything, but it might shower just a bit as we get into Sunday afternoon and Sunday night as the clouds do come back in from the west with this entire system. Been a very busy system. Uh, the Palm Sunday weekend severe weather outbreak in the Deep South started in, in Texas earlier Saturday morning. Uh, there, two fatalities, young children, one eight, one three years old, killed in the back seat of a car when debris fell onto it. The two people in the front seat uh, were not killed by the storm. And then uh, that there was a lot of damage in Texas, EF3 damage it looks like. That moved eastward. Uh, the area around uh, uh, Monroe County in Mississippi took it hard too uh, later Saturday evening as um, storms moved through there. And then finally, sporadic damage in parts of uh, – our area too, the Aberdeen uh, damage in Monroe County, uh, multiple homes damaged, multiple injuries in the town of Hamilton, at least two fatalities with people still missing. Now we haven't had an update on that report for quite some time because they're busy. I mean, they're, they're, they have things to do, people to protect, people to get settled for the night, and um, we wouldn't expect them to report in to us. Uh, but at some point we'll get a more firm report on that. But at this point, um, we're, we're hearing two fatalities and there may have been some other people missing beyond that. Um, but nothing later on that yet. Uh, these are the damage areas, as you can see, the Greystone Highland Lakes area of Shelby County, also down around Calera, and then a bit more, too, around the Hagler area in um, uh, Tuscaloosa County. This was non-thunderstorm wind damage here that occurred in West Walker County. And there's the back edge of the rain at this point. At 514 in the morning, getting close to Vance and uh, closing in on Jefferson County, so maybe about another 45 minutes or so to go in Jefferson County. There's some of that rain. It just doesn't look as organized as it did a short time ago as the overall trend seems to be toward weakening. Having said that, still some cloud to ground lightning in parts of Bibb County on southward, as you can see, in the parts of um, Perry County and surrounding areas. And that's still going to come across Chilton County. You folks in, uh, in uh, Peach Country still going to get another round of rain, probably with some lightning and thunder too. And in Shelby County as well, uh, Montevallo, some heavy downpours there on the campus at this point, Shelby Street. Spring Creek Road all getting some heavy rains. That will continue for a while longer, then begin to diminish in not too long a period of time. The rainfall rate back there is on the order of, um, a, it's pretty heavy. In fact, it's quite heavy. It's not a big extensive area, so it's not going to last real long. Um, but on the northwest side of Montevallo, it's still coming down at about 3.6 inches an hour. Again, it probably won't last a whole hour at that rate, and that's why the amounts will be somewhat less than that. But at this point, still raining very hard over the city of Birmingham, as you can see by the live shot. It's just soaking wet outside, and that's still going to continue for a little while longer. Stephanie. And, Jerry, the, the radar is really starting to look anything but organized. Much of, uh, especially our northern counties and, and the northeastern counties, it really just looks like it's raining with some occasional thunder. Once you go a little bit further to the south, and we kind of, uh, the leading edge, which was producing the severe weather, which that leading edge is now starting to move toward Pell City, and down through uh, Clinton now, that's basically uh, fallen apart. Clearly, you can see there's a, a, a little bit further to the west, a line of, of heavy rain and some occasional lightning now moving through Hoover, Pelham, and Calera. That is below severe limits. It is non-severe thunderstorms. That looks like the most organized part of this entire area of showers and thunderstorms. And again, that's well below severe limits. It's causing some very heavy rain. It would be very difficult to drive in this, but there isn't even a lot of, uh, of thunder and lightning with this either, which just really kind of indicates that things are getting a lot more stable across uh, central Alabama for the, uh, the time being. So we'll continue to track this area of rain from west to east now across the, uh, the central and eastern counties, uh, but it looks like things are starting to, uh, to really wind down. Where it looks like it's actually um, might be a little bit stronger and we may see still some stronger storms is actually a little bit further south, kind of closer to the, the Montgomery area and even south of Montgomery. So uh, we are seeing, again, no warnings in our area as of, uh, of right now. We've got uh, still some very heavy rain showing up across uh, central Alabama for the, uh, the Birmingham metro area and uh, also 
for um, places like um, Talladega, Gadsden, Anniston. The rain is coming in, but it's coming in pretty uh, light for right now. Most of the heavy rains and thunder and lightning kind of along the I-65 corridor and then uh, down toward uh, Calera and Pelham and Alabaster and uh, Hoover, those areas seeing at least some heavy downpour. So it does look like the, uh, the severe weather threat is starting to wind down significantly. We do still have some counties under a tornado watch for areas mainly east of I-65, uh, but certainly that threat does look to, uh, to, to start to uh, diminish now as uh, you can just kind of look at the radar and see that a lot of these thunderstorms are really weakening with, uh, with time. We haven't had any additional storm reports coming in, uh, just some stronger storms kind of, um, kind of south of the area for right now. Harmony. Hey, Steph, and you know, we've been on the weather watch since last night, and we're now 518 on a Sunday morning. So the reason why we got in so early is because we saw the strongest storms up until right about this time. Now we're still, of course, looking at a decent amount of heavy rainfall right through areas of Jefferson County, mostly uh, looking at these spots in Jefferson County with the heavy rainfall and a lot of lightning. But this is a very heavily populated area of central Alabama, including uh, sections of uh, Calera and Clanton. So let's go ahead and move in time. This is your future cast. Um, if we put it in motion, you can see that there's still going to be a significant amount of rainfall that's headed for Calhoun County as well as sections of the Talladega County and Etowah County as well. Now, there has been some talks, of course, of some potential redevelopment as we head towards the 7 a.m. hour, but that still remains to be seen because right now the current trend is showing a bit of a weakening scenario. But we're just getting started with this, with this day, so as soon as that weather system moves out, our severe weather threat will diminish completely for the day. But this is a snapshot of about 9 a.m., so we really can't can't rule out the possibility of a few rogue thunderstorms as that system head towards Atlanta. And then later in the day, we still do have a chance for some showers. We've got tons of humidity left in the atmosphere. 7 p.m. still dealing with uh, potentially some lingering showers. So this is our severe weather day. That's why it's shaded here in the red. This is a severe weather day that we've been looking at for several days now, and now it's coming to fruition, but mainly because of the amount of uh, reports that we got out of Mississippi, that's when we started to really see most of this stuff coming into Alabama. So the temperatures haven't moved too much in areas of, of Birmingham quite yet, but I do think that uh, as that cooler air and the windy conditions start to pick up, those low 60s in Coleman uh, may get a little bit cooler, but most of the 70s that we have in Talladega and Pell City, once the rain pushes through, those 70s will be gone as well. This is our WVTM 13 live Doppler radar, the only live radar available on television, 520 straight up Coleman County, lots of lightning for you, especially in northern Jefferson County as well as Warrior. We had some folks on social media asking about Warrior. We don't have any active warnings right now, and we are starting to see these watches diminish. There's not a tornado watch in effect for Jefferson County, but from Warrior and areas of Highway 31, it is coming down pretty steady. I-65 would be an extremely unpleasant stretch of roadway to even attempt to get onto right now. From Locust Fort and into Hayden as well as Aniana, the rain is pretty steady. There is some movement to this rain, but the majority of the heavy rain that has a lot of lightning strikes and potentially a little bit of wind gusts too, that's getting closer to areas of 119. And this is a spot uh, closer to a synagogue. We get you down into street level, that snow drive also right around Corporate Woods Drive, Shelby West Parkway. If any of these roads sound familiar to you and they're in your neighborhood, just know that we have heavy rain right now, potentially some blinding rain on some of these surface streets, uh, especially if they are kind of one of those canopy roads that have the trees covering. So it's not raining at this moment in Calera and Highway 31, but we get that fresh radar sweep. You see just a little bit more movement there towards Roberta. So it is moving towards the northeast, but there's a potential that we could and clip those sections. The rain is moving in pretty steady into Highway 23, also Spring Creek Road, lightning bolts
bolts also being picked up within this thunderstorm. So if it's moving northeast, we can expect it to really pass into Dargan and maybe even Highway 84. Again, any of these streets sound familiar to you. If you know your county, you know what county is to your south and west, then you're good. Bibb County, you're clearing right now from west to east, but the heaviest rainfall has now moved over west Blockton, lightning intermittent. I do think that most of areas near Jemison and Thorsby and into Clinton, you're going to see another wave of rainfall getting reports uh, from the National Weather Service earlier in Calera saying that that uh, tornado worn storm moved right near the National Weather Service. So right now the uh, skies are still dark, so it is very difficult for us to depict actual uh, tornadic rotation visually, but we are picking it up on our WVTM 13 live Doppler. This is all in real time and it is giving us this information faster than ever before. This technology helping us out tremendously to keep you ahead of it also allows us to get into your street. So 12th Avenue Southeast, Fulton Lake Road, close to areas of synagogue this morning, Fulton Springs too. If we zoom out and give you the wider aspect, this is sections of Jefferson and Shelby County that are very highly populated. Just within the Birmingham city limits, we have close to 750,000 people. So about a million people as you look at Birmingham downtown and the urban sprawl of the communities like Ensley and, and uh, Tarrant and Mountain Brook and, and into uh, Chelsea. These are sections that move out to Shelby County that are very highly populated. So here are some of the storm reports that we've received so far. Notice they are kind of sprawled out, but this particular section is a very highly populated and lots of neighborhoods off of 119. So uh, these are tornado reports that we have received. They were Doppler indicated tornado reports near the Lake Purdy area, Highway 119. This is in the city of Greystone, which is in Shelby County. And where we're seeing the majority of the damage would be trees down there's some trees down blocking Hugh Daniel Drive near Greystone Farms, trees down on Minor Way 2 in Greystone Farms. This is all associated with that tornado vortex signature that the Birmingham National Weather Service picked up. And we do have Sarah Killian right now in Shelby County, and she has a live report. Sarah. Hey, Armini, we're in the Narrows community right off Highway 280 near Chelsea, and we're seeing a good bit of damage here. Take a look here behind me. The Cahaba Valley Fire Department, they just were out here cutting up this very large tree that crashed across the roadway. You can see the tree just uprooted. It fell on this Jeep right here, and the owner tells me she bought this about a week ago. So a brand new Jeep, severely damaged by this tree that fell down on the roadway. Also, several homes here in the area are having damage. One woman tells me she has some damage to her roof, and there's water pouring down now. Another woman says a fence fell down. Part of her fence did, almost hit her home. So uh, some minor home damage reported, but really this is the worst of it, what we're seeing here in the Narrows. Of course, the rain is really coming down hard right now. It's not helping with these cleanup efforts. Certainly not helping the woman who has some roof damage right now, getting a lot of water in her home. But thankfully, we're not seeing any injuries here. Again, this is in the Narrows near Chelsea, right off Highway 280. Uh, but the Cobb Valley Fire Department, they're wrapping up their work here. They've been working very quickly, very hard, getting this roadway cleared up. But we're going to continue. If you have any damage reports, send them our way and let us know what you're seeing here in Shelby County. Harmony, back to you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Jerry Tracy now back in the weather wall with some of the storm reports. Jerry, tell us some about, some, something about these areas because Stephanie was saying they are just so highly populated, so this may impact a lot of folks. They are. Obviously, they're very highly populated, and uh, sometimes tornadoes affect areas where very few people live. Other times, they affect places where there's a lot of people, and in this case tonight, what we saw or early this morning, we saw this um, tornado here in the northern part of Shelby County affect the area north of Chelsea and then up toward Highland Lakes, Greystone, and continuing north of there. And it had a pretty well-defined tornado debris signature with it much of that time. That is, we were looking at the correlation coefficient, and we could see that there were different things falling besides just raindrops. In other words, debris had been lofted up and then coming back down again. Now, that debris can be tree limbs, tree branches, anything like that. But it can also be parts of houses and things of that nature. Hopefully this is not too serious in terms of how widespread it is, but we know there's some reports of damage in the area. Uh, trees blocking uh, Hugh Daniel Drive near Greystone Farms, trees down on Milner Way and Greystone Farms as well. That was all associated with that 
debris signature that moved northward here from about 280 on northward and further north. Lake Purdy at Grants Mill, also tree down on uh, Grants Mill Road near Lake Purdy, associated with that same tornado debris signature in that part of Shelby County. And all of that occurred, oh, in the general time of 4 a.m. to about 4.15 or so. And we had other reports scattered about two in Tuscaloosa County in Hagler from the Volunteer Fire Department, trees and power lines down near there, possible structural damage. John Papke did a live shot uh, for us from there, and he found some of the worst damage, and there was indeed some minor roof damage done to what he could see one house. It is dark, and obviously there may be some other issues as well, but mostly what he saw were trees and power lines down in and near that um, particular fire department there in Hagler. All right, taking a look at this now, we find a west edge of the rain now into Jefferson County. So obviously it's ending from west to east, and in general the convection is just much less organized than it was a short time ago. Uh, last, let's say, hour and a half, it's really come down in intensity in terms of, not necessarily in terms of the rainfall intensity, it's still raining hard in much of this area, but what has changed is it just doesn't look like organized convection anymore, and that means there's a much less chance you would develop any kind of a rotating storm or a big updraft in a storm that could cause hail or, or damaging winds and uh, certainly also minimizes the likelihood of any kind of a tornado. But it continues to press on eastward now, as you can see, Back edge of the heavy rain is just west of the city of Birmingham, and the back edge of all the rain is now just about to Oak Grove in Jefferson County. And once that moves through, the only thing that might happen would be a few scattered showers, and they might be just as likely later Palm Sunday afternoon into the evening hours as they would be early. Still some heavy downpours falling on the southeast side of Montevallo, as you can see. A Highway 31 here, obviously wet in places up through Shelby County and also Interstate 65, so it's coming down hard there in places. Uh, still some cloud to ground lightning too, and that won't go away right away, even though the organization of the storms is diminishing. Bibb County on the eastern part of the county, it's raining hard. That's extending into West Chilton County. Jemison and Thorsby have had a bit of a break over the last hour or so. More rain coming in from the west now, and it will rain hard with this when it comes through. And then further north we go, we find the back edge uh, basically to West Point in Coleman County and down into parts of Walker County as well. This uh, tornado watch here for Shelby County expires at 6 a.m., so in about 30 minutes from now. Further east, the ones that are right up against the Georgia state line, that expiration time is 9 a.m., but it is possible the National Weather Service will be able to um, uh, issue uh, get rid of some of those early, and I noticed they are going to allow the Shelby County watch to expire on time at 6 a.m. The outlook during the day on Sunday, which starts at 7 a.m. and lasts till 7 a.m. Monday, basically has no threat of any severe weather over much of the area, a marginal risk covering some of our eastern counties, including Etowah, Calhoun, Talladega, and Clay, and then east of there is a, shell, a slight risk, but that's mostly in the state of Georgia and in and around the Atlanta area. Five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, there's the back edge of the rain, and this model is going to wind up just about on the nose for that. That looks like it's going to be very accurate, and then that continues to press eastward, find a few spotty showers, as you can see, across uh, much of the area for Sunday morning, but very scattered stuff, not severe, nothing like that, not troublesome weather. What will be the case, though, along with these scattered showers, be some pretty gusty winds too, not associated with storms, just gradient winds, but they could be as high in gusts, as high as 25 or 30 miles per hour, and that could be a bit of an issue for folks who are outside. We don't think it's going to cause any major damage or anything, but with the ground so wet and some trees out there that are weak or maybe um, uh, just not doing very well, it could easily bring a few of those down. And Stephanie's looking ahead to the next bad news cycle with the weather. This is next Thursday, and next Thursday appears to be the next chance of any kind of strong to severe storms. It looks like this might be at a different time of the day, though. This might be the more typical afternoon and evening stuff that comes through Thursday. That's 4 o'clock Thursday afternoon. Heavy downpours with that, some thunderstorms likely as well. Some of those storms could be strong to severe. Uh, that's the next chance. In fact, over the next uh, six days, I think that's the only other chance of anything that might be severe. I think we're in good shape Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, probably in good shape behind that one Friday and the following weekend, which is Easter weekend, and Friday, of course, Good Friday. But on Thursday itself, another round of strong to severe storms, a definite possibility. We're now getting into this next wave, the last wave of heavy downpours here atop Red Mountain, and then things settle down very nicely to the west of us, as you can see, West Jefferson County and points westward. Um, no rain over Lamar, Fayette, Winston, Walker Counties, uh, Marion County, Pickens County, all done. Looks like this may take about another 
you know, 20 minutes to get through metropolitan Birmingham and continuing to move east of there. It looks like uh, looking at other possible counties to clear at the top of the hour as well. Dallas County would be high on that list of one of the counties they can clear and get out of in terms of any kind of um, tornado watch going forward uh, during the course of the morning hours. So it is coming to an end gradually now. We're seeing the rain wind down and the storm chances wind down too as the storm organization diminishes. Um, this particular line of storms here will be moving through Columbiana about 550 or about 18 minutes from now. Wilsonville 608, Pell City 621, Talladega Springs 627 as this all comes in from the west. So the line, the last bit of the heavy rain is now just west of Interstate 65 here and about to cross over 65 and 31 in Jefferson County. And then it really cuts off as you get into the western part of um, Jefferson County around North Johns. The rain has essentially stopped. If not, it will very shortly, and that will continue to progress on toward the east. So that's the last hurrah, you might say, showing up back here as the rain all shifts eastward through the eastern part of the state and begins to move east of Interstate 65. Still have the tornado watch in effect for our eastern counties, but it looks like they may be able to start whittling away at that too over the course of the next hour or so. Stephanie. Okay, Jerry, so we, uh, we're we really looking at kind of just an, uh, a disorganized area of showers and the line a little more organized once you head further south down into parts of Shelby and Chilton counties. The good news is even though we do still have some counties under a tornado watch, we don't have any active warnings right now. We do have some very heavy rain moving through um, and a, uh, a little bit of thunder and lightning. But again, we are, are kind of looking at a, a system that is undergoing uh, some weakening trends and uh, the good news is as we've kind of plotted on here over the uh, the last several hours there really hasn't been a whole lot at least in the uh, in the last 30 to 60 minutes or so that we have seen actually rotate so uh, you can see a lot of what we're seeing now um, are, are not even rotating at mid-level so that's a, certainly some good news Rain still coming down very heavily though and hard here into parts of Shelby and Chilton counties uh, where we do have numerous trees down already in some of these communities. Uh, we're seeing some heavier rain kind of coming back over those, uh, those areas we just saw from Sarah Killian a short time ago in Shelby County in the Narrows community where they're trying to clean up uh, some um, some down trees and of course it's starting to rain pretty hard again. Uh, it doesn't look like there is a, a tremendous amount of thunder and lightning but there's still enough out there that that can certainly be dangerous especially if you're outdoors and in it. Uh, otherwise it looks like for most of us um, over the next couple of hours the weather is actually going to clear up enough in time for many of us who will be uh, maybe heading out to some services this morning. It looks like we're getting kind of the last batch of the heavier rain now through uh, the uh, I-65 corridor, Shelby and, and Jefferson counties. And so um, that's certainly some good news. The rain has basically ended in uh, Tuscaloosa. I don't know if we have a, uh, a live shot of Tuscaloosa. I bet visibility is pretty good there. I'm sure things are still very wet from the, uh, the rain and the storms overnight. There's a live look over a downtown and of course visibility is good as the uh, the rain is now shifted to the east and we compare that to what we're seeing now over downtown Birmingham and I would suspect that uh, with the heavier rain now coming down here especially in Birmingham on top of Red Mountain cloud decks a little bit lower and of course uh, the rain coming down but visibility is still isn't too terribly bad uh, there either. Again you can see kind of the last little push of heavy rain now here just to the west of Birmingham now kind of clearing the Bessemer and Fairfield area and so uh, next in line will be downtown Birmingham, Homewood, Vestavia, uh, Hoover, down toward Pelham and Alabaster. Those areas that are now seeing some heavy rain. This is kind of the last push of the uh, the end of this heavy rain as it shifts east. The great news though that we continue to watch uh, these uh, these storms roll through and no warnings associated with them. Jerry? Indeed, Steph. Still some rain, still some lightning and thunder. Obviously, as this crosses Interstate 65 here, um, the heaviest or the last of the heavy bands of rain now just entering Birmingham. We'll be hearing that on our rooftop here shortly. And then um, back to the west, as you can see, um, not really anything going on once you get west of Vance and once you get from Tuscaloosa County and the city of Tuscaloosa on west. So the action's all in the east now and mostly from this area near Leeds on south into um, Chilton County, just west of Clanton. That area is still with some rain and thunderstorms there. Uh, Shelby County still being affected by some noisy thunderstorms causing uh, thunder in parts of um, central sections of uh, Shelby County, and that's pressing eastward too. 
So some very heavy rains in that area along 31 and 65, um, still coming down pretty hard. Here's a close-up view of the 119 area in um, Shelby County, as you can see, Indian Springs Village, still raining hard, Campground Road and uh, surrounding areas too. Greystone Way, this is the area that was hit by the tornado earlier that does have some damage. Most of it seems to be tree and power line damage and that kind of thing. Uh, Hugh Daniel Drive and surrounding areas as well. Brook Highland Drive too, that whole area being impacted by that um, uh, tornado that came through earlier tonight, uh, earlier this morning, I should say. And then uh, back to the west, we had the tornado that occurred in um, Monroe County, Mississippi. That was uh, late Saturday evening, and that one causing two fatalities, unfortunately, and perhaps other injuries or maybe fatalities as well. But there's the way the situation is. This is really beginning to collapse now, the convection intensity going down, and uh, we expect that trend to continue. So the line of storms, if you want to call it that, from Chilton County on up through Shelby County, and then from there northeastward as we get into St. Clair County, not too much in the way of lightning over the northern part of the area, and the rain basically has now ended in much of West Jefferson County, and that trend will continue on to the east too as we go through all oh, the next hour or so as time goes on and all of this begins to shift away to the east, and we expect that trend to continue. Rain uh, did fall and still is falling in Clay County and uh, uh, Cleburne County, Randolph County as well, getting some of that rain around Wadawi, and that will... Um, continue for a while longer, may let up for a while, then the next band will come in, or this heaviest band, which is now crossing 65 and 31 in Shelby County, just west of um, 65 in Chilton County. Heavy rain all through here, Jemison, Thorsby, Clanton, some of those downpours coming through, Interstate 65, Highway 31, um, but at least, uh, like Stephanie was saying, we're not seeing the rotation even in the mid and upper levels of some of these storms now, like we were not that long ago, the updrafts are less organized and um, they're pretty much raining themselves out as we go forward in time here. That seems to be the trend that continues onward. Um, still a tornado watch in effect over the southeastern part of the state and that continues to be the case. Um, let's check out this uh, mesosail discussion. Uh, it's basically for extreme southern parts of the area, the Florida panhandle and South Alabama, not a factor for us, so we're still dealing with this. This continues to press on toward the east, still making it very wet. Um, the rain in Aniston and Gadsden, not too heavy, but it will pick up again. That last heavy band finally coming through here now. We hear it atop Red Mountain and beginning to diminish to off to the west here, west of 65 and 31. Some lightning with this around, cloud to ground lightning in parts of Shelby County, as you can see. That's all headed eastward. And could you repeat, please? I'm to 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 tossed to Stephanie Walker. Hey, Jerry. I think we're getting some um, some new video in uh, that we uh, want to pass along to uh, to our viewers at home. This is some of the video that John Papke shot uh, a short time ago. He was in Tuscaloosa County. This is off of Colding Road in Tuscaloosa County. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's closer to Hagler or Colding, but clearly you can see she sustained some uh, roof damage as that tornado moved on through. This is one of the confirmed tornadoes that we've had and clearly you can see obviously since her roof is damaged she uh, obviously got some water damage as well. And I think we have some sound. This is Katie Hubbard. The power went off and uh, then the loud noise and the sound like glass breaking and that was when the roof went up I reckon. And I had and then, a flower pot out there. I think that's what broke. Did the water and start pouring in? Kind of talk about what happened there. Yeah, night. it was just dripping there at the stove to start with, and then I started putting stuff down on the floor, towels and bowl, uh, bowls, and then it just started all over the kitchen. How scary was that for you? It wasn't. <laughs> did, you, did you feel safe? Sure. Allie called me to come over there, and it wasn't five minutes till it hit, so I wouldn't have made it over there. So I was better off to stay here. Um, you've lived in this house since 1957. Right. Um, obviously, it's going to require some roof repair. Um, any concerns about that, taking care of that? Well, I've been thinking about putting a new roof on it anyway. So now's a good time to do it. Are you insured? Yep. Sort of a blessing then? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, could things have been worse? Yeah, they could have been. But at least I'm safe and alive. 
Miss Katie. We are so glad she is safe um, and, uh, and can get that roof fixed. So that was off of Coling Road in Tuscaloosa County. And this is some other video that John Papke shot of some of the intense lightning that we had with those earlier storms this morning. A lot of the lightning has really kind of waned as these storms have weakened considerably too, uh, but it was certainly very intense there. For